the first time you did DMT? Yeah. Oh, what? I thought you... I thought you were psyching on, man. I thought you were done. No, no I've, I've, I've done, like, shit tons of really heavy mushroom trips and stuff. Like, you know, 10 gram mushroom trips and countless sort of heavy Jesus mushroom Christ. trips. But I've never done trip. Was it called Demetha Trip to me before? Yeah. Oh, damn, dude. That, yeah. Yeah, DMT's yeah. a whole other world. But the first yeah, time right. I did it, we fucking did it like five, six times in one night. It's kind of a lot. I fucking, my brain was like, dreams were really trippy for like a couple days after that. <laughs> but it feels like you're dreaming while awake. It's that intense. I don't know how to put it. It really uh, is like a dream. Too. Because you will forget about it, like what actually happened during it. Very quickly. I felt like I was. I felt like I was only able to hold on to shards of what happened. I know yeah. a lot more happened than I could remember. If that makes sense, like a, I was only able to grasp onto parts of it. It's exactly like a dream in that way. It's just sl just slips out of your hands the moment that you come back to reality. Wait, you did it too, uh, Sam? Yeah, I did it uh, in college. Um, oh shit, dude! Friend of mine, a Korean guy, actually. He, I was, I was living at his place, uh, in Vancouver, and he ordered the materials online and made it himself in the kitchen. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that's crazy. It was wild. Yeah, he um was my shaman. The dude was Damn. really into it. Yeah, he did it oh, by yeah. himself, and then he helped me to do it. And, um, yeah, there's no. I was gonna yeah. say there's no. You need assistance taking it, right? Like there's yeah. no way I could do more than one hit on my own. Like as soon as I did my first full deep hit, I couldn't even see my arms. I was like seeing the pipe and the lighter sort of floating in this weird different dimensional space. I couldn't even see myself anymore. It was so fucking crazy. I don't even try to do it with my eyes open, man. I close my eyes instantly. I, I like did it with my eyes. To do it with your I, eyes open. <laughs> I did it with my eyes open, Snow, and I shit you not, it was terrifying. Like yeah, holy yeah. shit! Maybe I, I'm supposed to, to do it my eyes closed. Closed. I was like, yeah, I'm, nope, not doing this. With my the eyes whole open. the whole room like in instantly liquefied into nothing, and then redigitized into some other fucking dimension in the space of like nanoseconds. It was fucking really full on. It was crazy. Um, the best way I could describe it was it was just like cogwheels everywhere. It was like a well, it eventually, weird. eventually, it was like infinite ceilings and infinite floors interacting with each other, like some kind of like interdimensional tesseract. There's only way I can explain it. Yeah, but there was things patterns, moving man. through me. I could feel like slimy, not slimy, but the, for lack of a better word, something weird pushing through my body, like it was made out of water. Like there was things interacting with me as if I had no matter. Hmm. I think you guys might have taken something like a different form of DMT than I did because I didn't even have a sense of self when I did. I I took three hits, and well, I'm I talking didn't about exist. like on the come down. I'm talking oh, about dude. on the come down. When oh, okay. I when I broke, like the one the one like out of like the four or five times I did it, I only broke on one of them. And the one that I broke, I remember like saying out loud, like, "Guys, I think I died." <laughs> <laughs> I was dying when I, when, I first, when I first did it. I was like, "Holy shit!" If I like, my, my, I don't know how to explain it, but I had like a thousand thoughts in the space of like one second, mm. and it was like, as far as I was concerned, I might as well have just smoked a nuclear bomb, and I was like playing frame by frame, me killing myself. It was fucking weird. Well, the yeah. the feeling of like dying or like being pulled apart is like ego death. And mm -hmm. the first hit, you feel like the separation coming, and it's really frightening and scary, like hard to take another hit. But the Korean guy that I was with, he was he was holding the pipe, and like as I was inhaling the first hit, he was preparing the second hit. And like the moment that. that I was done, like exhaling, it was he was ready with the the next hit, and then the next hit. Like I just he he was on top of it. And uh, there was nothing, there was no, nowhere else, there was no, nowhere to run, you know, it was, he was there and he was ready. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, glad he you had someone that. to assist you, man. Did you do like weed, DMT weed, like, like stack the sandwich? No, like a, like a. Straight, straight powder? It's like a little, it's, it's funny because he would make fun of me because, uh, it, or he would, he would play off of my, 
emotions like because um it was actually like a, a meth pipe you know what i mean like a, a glass pipe with a little bowl oh, at the end and a hole in the top it's like what people smoke meth out of but you know yeah you, i'd be like oh we're gonna do dmt no you're you're gonna smoke out of this this pipe like this pipe no this meth pipe you mean scott <laughs> i mean <laughs> it's messing with me you know <laughs> oh, but um but, that's the yeah, best way to do it it has to be like you have to do that way it has There's no to way be you like do. vaporized you know what i mean you yeah can't... i actually hit mine out of a vape oh yeah it's like a dmt vape i've i've seen those before you... and i've i've used those before but it's not as intense not as intense at all yeah so what's different from like a DMT vaporizer to say a regular dry herb vaporizer for weed? Mm, you're talking about like a wax pen compared to a DMT pen? Yeah, I'm just trying to like figure out like what's the process of burning it specifically for DMT. Like, is there a certain temperature threshold you need to reach? <clears throat> or what? I don't know the science behind it, to be honest. I think it's a temperature thing. Like you it gets really really hot in a glass pipe like you need it to be yeah extremely hot and then yeah. right as you like it it heats up really really hot inside the glass pipe and then like right as you inhale it just completely turns into smoke and goes that's basically you know, right how i did mine yeah. i did mine in a glass pipe yeah i think that's how you have to do it I, I have done I have done what you're talking about, Love Snow, like the, the little vape pen, and you can feel it. Um like there is the, the feeling of like separation. More controlled though. But it's it's basically like you, you only get to basically the first hit level. You know what I mean? Interesting. And I then, did I did three hits, like three like as deep of an inhale as I could, mm -hmm. exhale, instantly felt it. I was still holding it in my hand, went for the second one. Deepest hit I All could right. fucking do. Exhaled, and then like my hand was starting to like release, like I couldn't hold it much longer, and I just like did again, like went to inhale it, was going for the deepest hit possible I could do, and then like my hand just like li like my body just like went limp, like it just I just was on the floor when I was doing this, and I just laid out, and like it just fell out of my hand, yeah, and then just went there, man. Well, I didn't feel like I could even like control my arms even after my first deep hit. Like right. I, yeah. I, I, I like instantly get a, started blasting get off. More I smoke have... with the the pet or with the uh the pipe it's for sure. That's, I did a really deep hit, and I just like need somebody, I was gone, dude. You need somebody to yeah. hold it for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't <sighs> hold it. I couldn't hold it myself. Like we tried one time, and yeah, same thing. Like my hand just went down, and you know he was like, "Come on, do it again," and I like I couldn't lift my hand. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I felt like I couldn't even. Yeah, I felt like I couldn't even, even. Even after I came down from the initial intensity of the trip, and I had a little bit of a sense of self, I didn't even feel like I could control my arms or was aware of what orientation they were. You know what I mean? Well, it's yeah, cra it, it's crazy. Like I, I remember laying on the floor like after I came, like as I was coming down, um, and I was looking up at my hand, and I could see through my hand and there was like energy moving through my fingers and then i stood up and went to the kitchen sink and started doing dishes and everything was fine it was like within <laughs> seconds i was back to normal oh, just like waking up from a dream it's it's very fast 100 percent. yeah but what was the experience like as you're exhaling the first hit because mine was so fucking sudden and crazy yeah, yeah it, it's fast as fuck. It's really, really fast. Like I like I was saying, like the feeling of separation of like your mind being pulled out the back of your head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I felt like I was little ego ego death. It's scary. I felt like I was getting atomized. Like I literally like disintegrated and ceased to exist. Mm -hmm. I, re I remember crazy. being terrified trying it. Like yeah. I was like like there was yeah, it, a couple times my buddy next to me that was like my shaman that night that was doing it. And he just was doing it a couple of times, like next to me. We're both laying on the floor. <clears throat> and then finally I built up the courage to try it because I was curious, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I remember like the first thing I did, dude, was like, check my vitals. Like, I was like, right. Okay. Heart rate's normal. Okay. <laughs> Breathing. Okay. My, my body's here. I'm, I'm alive. Okay. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I remember like she was like checking my vitals, man. That was the first thing I did. It was so different. It was so different than acid and mushrooms and peyote and, well, it, and felt, all that shit, yeah. it felt a little bit like mushrooms as I was inhaling. It was like suddenly I was induced into a deep mushroom trip as I was inhaling. But the moment I exhaled, that was that was like nothing compared to what happened next. Like the deep mushroom trip was like just a canvas. And then all of a sudden it was like fucking full blown rocket ship, right? It feels like yeah. you're exhaling your last breath. <laughs> you're just like, oh my God. I felt like, like I was shaky. dying with it, yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like the universe was laughing at me for being so foolish as to kill myself. You know what I mean? Like it was really intense. Like I was actually dying. You fear death now, Shun? I don't know actually I'm kind of fascinated by it it's both like it's both it's intrigued me it's terrifying and now I now that I know what's somewhat is possible and how little I understood just from doing things like acid and mushrooms and whatever I'm really intrigued by what else is beyond the veil so to speak because I I feel like maybe even people that are like very um experienced dmt users maybe haven't even mapped hardly anything of that 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 realm or whatever you want to call it so i feel like it's crazy to think about what could possibly be beyond the veil and maybe when we die we go to experience that even more i don't know yeah that's i mean uh, it's a scary experience and it's it's kind of like a, a weird uh thing to do smoke out of like a meth pipe when i've never been close to those type of drugs at all but it it, it was like a crazy wild experience and the biggest thing that came out of it is that like understanding of what it's like to die do you know what i mean it felt like what it's like to it die like so death. much yeah yeah that it made me yeah. feel like not nearly as afraid of that anymore you know well that yeah. was the big thing i like remember after i did it i was like why was i so scared to try this like it wasn't scary at all really? i remember saying that to my buddy next to me yeah I was like, I was so terrified to try it. Oh, yeah. And then, like, after I did it and I broke and I came back and, like, we were back to normal, so to speak. I was still, like, you know, you're still kind of in that fog a little bit. But I was like, I can't believe I was so scared to try it, man. And he didn't say anything. He just looked at me and, like, smiled. And that's it. And then he did it himself again. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the, the wait, thing, no, wait. like, Shun, did you feel like you wanted to do it again right after? It was so bizarre because, like... I, I did do two big hits uh, one after the other because I was really intrigued by it and wanted to see what the fuck is this all about. And um, so yes is the answer. But I was also equally terrified though. Like even though mm. I was fascinated, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like this is crazy. Like this is fucking nuts. You're literally disintegrating and reappearing in a different fucking dimension or whatever the fuck that is. I don't even know how to put it into words. I had to wait yeah, like I a think month. it's very... <laughs> like were you guys both sober when you did it yeah reasonably sober yeah maybe a tiny bit high but not not anything crazy okay so like my experience was totally different like it was my uh my 26th birthday 27th birthday my 27th birthday um that's when i did it and we were like drinking the whole night and i was like doing blow and then um at the end of the night you know i'm smoking nicotine whatever like, at the end of the night like bars are closed uh we go back to our buddy's pad the shaman and like we come inside, he gives us some Molly, and we're fucking doing that. And then he comes out again and gives us shrooms. And then it was like a like I don't know, probably like an hour or two into my shroom trip that he like introduced the DMT pen. Jesus, so I, I don't know. I feel like I was already in like such a a deep state going into That's it. Kind of nice. That sounds nice in a way. It sounds like you got like. A... Like I don't know. Like I, I feel like it, it would hit so different if I was sober. I feel like I'd be a lot more scared trying it sober i feel like because i was already on so much that yeah night, that's like that's i was kind like of what I mean. you're already incubated to do it to yeah it's point, like you're you know? in the, you were in the womb and you got to like rather than getting like born out into the world it was like you're born into a pool you know what i mean like you're yeah, kind of a nice it's is so peaceful man like molly and shrooms man they complement each other so well <laughs> that's <laughs> wild um yeah that that's crazy i can't even imagine actually even mixing molly and shrooms sounds insane to me i've only done them it wasn't a big dosage of each one mm. i've done uh, a heavy dosage of well not of molly but i never was into pills but i've done like a point of molly and like an eighth of shrooms at the same time 
But this yeah. time it was like probably like a gram and a half of shrews and like maybe half a point of molly or something. Still that strong. That's a lot of that's a lot of mixture. I guess you were you... did you get snapped out of your like that when you came back from the DMT, were you like feeling sober or were you back to mushroom level again? I feel like it would almost snap you out of it. Like you'd feel so um normal after DMT. Yeah, I mean kind of. It was like, oh, like we're here again. Like this isn't that intense. <laughs> it's right. kind of my mentality. Like I, I, I was probably fucked up, obviously, but you know, like in my mental state at that moment, I, I felt like, yeah, like this is this is pretty sober, man. <laughs> it's pretty wild. I remember I, I did uh like my trip that I broke on. I was actually on the floor. Um, actually, did I break on that one? I can't remember if that was the one I broke or the one before. But I did it with Veronica. We were like holding hands, laying on the floor. And she did it too for the first time as well. Such an interesting experience. Uh, it, it definitely is so intense with your eyes open. It's like, I, I don't even think... I, I'm, maybe I, next time I do it, I should try and... Uh, yeah, maybe not have my eyes wide open. Wait, so you had I your eyes open the whole trip? Yes, I was fucking going crazy, dude. It was nuts. Uh, I, did, I didn't oh know what I was supposed God. to do. Just, Close I, your eyes, man. I lay back and relax. <laughs> the, stuff, the stuff that I was... My cousin seemed to do that. My cousin was more closing his eyes and chilling out on his trip. But I was more like eyes open. But I wasn't here, though. So I didn't feel like having my eyes open was like important. Maybe I'm, I'm, I was retarded or something. But I had my eyes open pretty much the entire time. It was really fucking intense. Even when I came back down, as in came back from whatever that dimension is, and I was back in this room, I still was on like a very heavy mushroom trip level of intensity. It was still really intense. Maybe even more so than the heavy mushroom trips, actually. Dang. You gotta try it um, again sometime. Let's know. Man, LA parties are different, hey? Like, holy shit. That's wild. <laughs> It's a lot of drugs, man. That was, it was my birthday. And we just oh, happened heart. to have the shaman there, man. He's the freaking he's got everything, dude. The guy's crazy. That's my birthday uh, on Monday, guys. 33. Dang, dude. The life of Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I'm uh That's the age I am right now. I think I'm gonna eat uh I'm gonna go and have all you can eat yakiniku. And that'll be my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yakiniku you guys never had yakiniku it's, it's just like barbecue yeah. Japanese barbecue sounds good like bite sized meat yeah like bite sized meat on a flame grill mm, looks good yeah I'm, I'm not 27 anymore man not, not that crazy <laughs> But um, you grew up in LA, right? Love Snow. Yeah. Have it has it changed a lot since you were a kid? Uh, it's more gentrified, I guess would be the word. I guess your area. Yeah, like just specifically where I'm at. I think I just notice it more nowadays. Maybe it's always been this way, but I notice it more now. So like, it, it's a pretty nice area because it's been been gentrified. Or... Yeah, I mean, there's parts of LA you don't want to go to, yeah. <laughs> For sure. But there's parts that are pretty cool. It's a big place, a right? Of... It's freaking huge. There's a lot of uh, LBGTQ stuff. That's yeah, but... right. Heart of Darkness over there. Center <laughs> of the Tempest. Lots of uh, after hour spots in LA, man. I don't go anymore. Can't do it. After hour spots, like uh, all night places. Yeah, man. Like you fucking go to a bar, it closes at two. It's like, all right, wh where are we going? It's like, oh, we're going to Lick and Dip or, you know, some other spot. Like there's a bunch of fucking after hour spots. You're just there. It's like nine in the morning. And then like, it's like, all right, we're next spot. Like, where are we going next? It's just like <laughs> all these warehouses that have freaking parties all day, basically. That's crazy. That's like uh, alcoholic's worst nightmare, right? Like, or it's all dream. fucking 
people doing coke, man. Like that's the only, that's the only way they're up. <laughs> all right. You've got somewhere to but, go yeah, all day, all night. Al- alcohol and coke, man. It's like yeah. crazy how, how much is out there. Especially Everyone's with like selling cooks alcohol and stuff. like past two a.m. and shit, dude. It's gotta be wild and raising crazy. raising kids in L.A. <laughs> crazy like the cops know about all these spots and they just kind of like well you know just let them be they're not hurting anyone well they got lots of problems to deal with man like just think about all the calls that they get for overdoses and shit <coughs> right must be wild plus all like the i mean i feel like we're all kind of living in la in in a weird kind of way because we hear about it so much even if we don't live there <laughs> It's all over like YouTube and that's basically all the media I consume. Do you even watch TV anymore, Shin? Like mainstream TV? I mean, not really. I mean... British TV? Maybe I'll see like a, a news clip or something from mainstream TV here and there, but not really, no. Only thing I hear about British TV is like uh, people getting arrested for social media posts. It's everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have actual true free speech here in the UK, unfortunately. So I've got to be somewhat careful of what I say. I can't, you know, do certain things. Retweet certain things. Yeah, even if we just retweet certain things, even if you yourself aren't saying it, if you just support it or propagate it or spread it, yeah, that's just as bad. So what's with all these immigrants, Shun? <laughs> <laughs> they should really go back home, right? <laughs> Try to get him in trouble. <laughs> yeah, these are some dangerous waters, my friend. Kind of wish I had some whiskey for this. I think it'd be a perfect occasion. <laughs> oh, we're getting sober, love snow. I'm. I've had one. I'm sure, beer. he's already toasty. He's a little. You already have one beer. You serious? Yeah, man, I've been taking this 2200 MMR challenge serious, man. I can't play the drug. I fucking just throw away all my points when I play drunk. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, you definitely need to be sober snow to hit those kind of ranks. Well, I'm not sober, but yeah, you know, we're close enough. Soberish, relatively sober. <laughs> so you had some big news recently, Love Snow. You, uh, you quit your job? Yeah, we actually uh, quit the day job. Um, what was your day job, first of all? And for those of you that don't know, I was working in the school districts. I was a uh, one-on-one behavioral therapist or behavioral technician, I guess is our proper term. I uh, worked with children with autism, typically, as a one-on-one aide. You know, be with them throughout the day, help them out with their classes, you know, manage their behavior and record data on their behavior and whatnot. Find ways to motivate them to get their work done and to not disrupt the classroom and, you know, avoid them causing trouble with other students and things like that. So I was doing that for about three years or so. And um, I would have kept doing it this year, to be honest. Uh, What made me stop is I'm three classes away from graduating college, man. And uh, the class that I need to take, it's a prerequisite for the final class I need. It was only available Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 1245. And that's like dead center middle of the day for my school cases on Monday, Wednesday. And I told my agency like, Hey, you know, I I can't work Monday, Wednesday. I have school at the center this time. And they're just like, well, we can't really give you a a full-time case then. Like we need someone that's consistently going to be there Monday through Friday because these kids like they need consistency. They can't have like one person here this day, one person there that day. It's not good for them. They want, you want someone to be there with them every day, you know? Um, so that, combined with uh you know just my business is starting to do a little bit better uh it's nice to be able to allocate more time towards that kind of led me to all right we're not gonna sub we're just gonna kind of not do this anymore it was great taught me a lot probably the biggest thing was the virtue of patience (laughs) i bet and um yeah that's why we've been streaming so much man we've been really putting in a lot of hours on twitch Hey, you're a great streamer, by the way. This is how we we all met. Actually, I met Shun through hanging out in your stream. <laughs> yeah, that's um some good mm. memories from that. It's nice to have you guys both back here, though. It's fun. Yeah, I got the boys back in town. 
And Snow, yeah, you are very charismatic as a streamer. You're a natural at it. And um, you avoid the traps of many other streamers. Like, you don't just, like, beg for money or, like, like emotionally manipulate your audience and they give you money. You'll actually, like, you know, act like a businessman and, like, go and put some fight nights together or, you know, do some show matches or whatever it is. Like, I like that about you. And you keep your community engaged and you're always fun to watch. Yeah, you got to give, yeah. give the viewers something if you want something back from them. You know what I mean? Like, so many streamers are just mindlessly plugging away at whatever game they're playing and and hoping for uh, to make returns, yeah. you know. But um, giving the the viewers something, and I guess uh, I wanted to talk to you about um, your stream and uh, talking with the audience and like giving the audience a lot of information because I feel like you're one of the few people I see that really talks honestly with the with the stream and like gives them a lot of information about your life um a lot of people are like afraid to do that do you feel afraid about like parasocial relationship building and stuff like that have you had any experiences with that mm, interesting question um no honestly i, I feel like it's uh it's very fun to be able to have an audience to kind of share what's going on in my life with, because I know it's like, it's almost like therapy session, man. I get to like kind of vent what's going on. If there's bad things happening or, you know, problem solve, if there's things I have questions about, you know, see if anyone has a different opinion about it or a different perspective. And then when things are going good, you know, it's always fun to share your success to a certain degree. Um, I never feel nervous or, like afraid to share things um you know there's probably some things that i don't know honestly there's not really very much that i haven't really shared on my channel i'm pretty open about a lot of things yeah you talk about some things i won't just relationships and stuff like what kind of relationships you're going through struggles uh work stuff you know talk about the school yeah. district or talk about kids uh that are problems or talk about volleyball um, I think it really like lets like it, it. It's funny because you let people in, and it gets you makes you popular. But then, if you let people in, uh, too much, and then you become very popular, then you might end up having problems. Right? It's like a, yeah. It's it's a it's a paradox. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely been one thing on my mind. Is like as I, you know, hopefully we we blow up and we become even bigger than we are today. And that's like, you know, obviously the goal of every streamer is to just become as big as possible. Right. And, you know, I, I do think about it sometimes because I do work with children and I work in like, you know, I'm a club director of a club and whatnot. Obviously there's probably some things that I may not want to be speaking about publicly just in case someone mm -hmm. were to, to, you know, clip it or, you know, try to blackmail me with it, I suppose. But, you know, at the moment I feel pretty, pretty safe and comfortable sharing what i'm sharing i don't think i'm saying anything too far-fetched or too inappropriate that it would be deemed disrespectful rude or bad to be talking about you know just talk about drugs all you want just don't talk about how you hate lgbt right like <laughs> 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 that, that'll get you killed in uh, la right or canceled hey man i, I live in I, my neighborhood <laughs> that i live in bro i got I got lesbian neighbors to my left. I got gay neighbors to my right, dude. Like, <laughs> we're open out here, man. It's cool. Well, that's good, man. I mean, I really enjoy your stream. I feel like it's uh, very personable. You're very personable, enjoyable to hang out with. And if that's what it feels like. It feels like a hangout. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of that, man. Uh, you know, people... I attract a lot of people that they're coming home from the bars or they're pre-gaming for their night and they're just like hanging out <laughs> on my channel, dude, just drinking with me and they're just like having a good time, chilling, well, listening to the live sets and whatnot. That's, you know? that's essentially the premise of your stream, right? Is like just chill vibes, ultimately. Yeah, chill vibes, good music, gamer, and uh, just a safe place, man. You can kind of talk about anything. I've had a lot of people talk about some very deep shit on my channel, man. And it's cool that they feel comfortable enough to share those things with not only myself, but with the rest of the chat 
and it's really dope. It's really cool. People talking you, about drugs, talking about yourself. relationships. Yeah, so you know, I, I imagine personal your, life problems. Yeah, I imagine just you as your kind of person promotes that behavior because you yourself are quite open and wanting to explore these deeper topics, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you're about to finish college. Are you um, planning to just keep going with your business after uh, college, or are you gonna look for a job in um, mental health? Mental health wellness. So I've been thinking about that a lot, and um, I guess we'll talk about my business a little bit later. But in short, I'm gonna get a master's. I'm going for a master's in sports psychology after my degree. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm getting my degree in psych. Um, after I finish my degree in psychology, I'm going to be going for a master's in sports psychology. And the idea is I'm getting all this education just to help me be a better volleyball coach. I want to, but not only volleyball coach, but also just be able to better understand my athletes, be able to better understand how to help them. And as a club director and coaching multiple teams and overseeing multiple teams, it can't hurt me to get more education in this field. It can only benefit me to allow me to provide more services to my players and to their families. So that's what I'm thinking about. And then ultimately down the road, um, you know, we're looking to one day have our own facility where we have, you know, X amount of courts where we can run all our practices for the facility. I'd love to have like two offices. One office is like my office dedicated to just maintenance of the club. And then one office that I could use as a uh, like um, as like a private practice office where I could have a couple of private cases where you know I work with specific athletes that maybe need a little bit more attention than just something I could do over a couple moments of their time together where they may actually need therapy of some sort. That's, that's kind of the idea of what I want to use my education for in short, I suppose. So you're really focused on sport, right? You're not very interested in like going back to kids, uh, you know, autistic children. Or no, I've never like been interested that in maybe. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't like uh, motivating a kid with a potato chip. I think it's so ridiculous. Right. That's what it. That's what it takes, though. Potato chips. That's how you get them to. Dude, it it like it's pretty sad, bro. It's like. It feels like you're like working with an animal sometimes, the way they teach you to work with these kids. Really? So you feel yeah, like it's pretty I, rudimentary? I don't, I don't like, like it. Mm -hmm. That's what I was like. I was doing it because it's helping me get experience working with children and exposing me to schools. Because I, I wanted, like, for a long time, I was going to be a school psychologist. And then I, I just learned from being at so many schools and speaking with different school psychologists, like, school psychologists, like, this is not what I want to do whatsoever. You're just talking to insurance companies and working behind a desk all day. You don't even interact with the fucking kids. It's really? like, what, what am I doing this for? Like, I'm just working with, I'm just talking to lawyers, talking to, you're, you're just writing emails to, you know, different school districts about hours to allocate to pr have service providers that half the time don't even show up for their scheduled times. Like, it's, I was like, I don't want to do this. So then I was like, well, I, I mean, that's more recent, but when I first went to college and was like my freshman and sophomore year, I actually wanted to do shroom therapy. That's actually what I wanted to do. It just wasn't really a thing yet. And um, there were there were a couple of professors that I had my sophomore year of school that thought it was a great idea. And there were a couple that just kind of looked at me like, hmm, might not be in the right country for this. <laughs> right. Gotta move to Canada, maybe. South America, it seems like Central America. One of the two. One of the two. Depends on if you like it hot or if you like it cold. Mm. Well, Canada is pretty open about psychedelic use. Oh yeah. In like the form of medicine. Uh yeah, it's mm. it's pretty open now. Um, they legalized basically all drugs in uh, Vancouver and British Columbia. So it's kind of wild over there right now. So like similar to like Amsterdam, huh? Something like that, but a little bit more sloppy. Yeah, it feels Absolutely. like they didn't really, they didn't really think it, they didn't think it out too well. They're just like uh, harm reduction, you know, harm reduction policy. 
taking mm. it to the extreme. And um, actually, my mom is a, a psych psych nurse, working. She was working in a hospital for a very long time, um, outreach yeah. program, and uh, she actually just retired recently because they put a like safe injection site right in the hospital. So she's like just not not down with you know these people that she's like trying to treat walking over and just shooting up you know in her vicinity anyway yeah. she was like she's just not down with it but it is getting it's getting crazy like drug deaths are way up all kinds of problems with drugs are through the yeah. roof but then at the same time it's like what do you really do because it's it's been getting worse for decades just getting worse and worse mm. so there's not really a good solution. Feels like everyone's just grasping at straws, like trying to figure out what what's gonna work. It's really more like a a loneliness epidemic and like a mental health crisis, balled up into one, you know. Plus, plus like a bad economic situation. Just Which I think is weird because like there is a little bit of a psychedelic wave right now with like the amount of access to psychedelics that there is in a lot of places. And sure. it seems like we're we should be able to find ways of you know connecting and ripping down divides and what have you. But it seems like it's going the other way. It's almost like despite there being an access to these substances, people still are kind of like going this same destructive path. I wish that they could open. Sure. Up, wish they could open up the it's pathway right. to just like psychedelics and not all of these other drugs too. You know what I mean? Like how come? How come fentanyl has to be, you know, de decriminalized? Can't we just decriminalize mm -hmm. acid and mushrooms and, you know, iboga? Yeah. That type of stuff? Yeah. I don't, know, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Terrence McKenna, but... Yeah, very, yes, I'm very familiar. Freaking, I think the world would be a better place, man, if everyone had uh, just one mushroom. <laughs> Well, he's the founder of the stoned ape theory, which, you know, basically suggests that we not only evolved from apes, but we did so with the aid of, you know, psychedelics like psilocybin and mushrooms. Yeah. They're definitely uh, helpful, for sure. I can't, I can't, I can imagine that they would be part of our uh, evolution. I can't imagine that they would be detrimental to the development of a consciousness and the ability to like look in at yourself and see the world in such a mind boggling also, way. Also unity too, right? Like the ability yeah, to well, sympathize with other people. Well, it destroys your, in if, if you go deep enough in terms of ego death, then it, it destroys the sense of individualism. So it's almost like you're forced into a unity perspective, right? It kind of overrides sure. all that pre-existing programming of your ego telling you how like it's self-important, how, how you know, everything separates you. But then it kind of like flips that on its head, completely smooths over any of any grooves in your brain that think like that. And suddenly you can, you know, rewire your brain looking at things through a totally new lens of like, like, yeah like you um unity or love are quite commonly talked about it's, i guess it, you could also come to the realization that it's not so much that it's um you you're living in the universe experiencing the universe and the world it's more like the universe is experiencing you a human experience in the form of you so it feels almost like you're playing a role in a play you're no longer john or james or susan you, you, those are just titles those are just roles that you're playing you're you're the universe experiencing a human experience in the form of that role you're like the eyes and the ears of the universe you know you're you're the universe experiencing itself yeah through that one straw of bandwidth and we're all different straws of bandwidth and you know we're points of consciousness and different forms Man, it's so funny what you guys are talking about, man. Is that I've thought about this a lot. Was like the idea that, you know, obviously we're energy, right? Like energy can't yeah. be destroyed. So it's always led me to think that 
when we die, we just go somewhere else. I don't think it's over. It's not just black. I agree. But Especially- I feel like we made a choice to come to Earth. I feel like we were in a different place. And yeah. for some reason, it was like an invitation. Like, hey, would you like to experience all these emotions from a human perspective? Would you like to experience fear and love and heartbreak and you know yes. happiness and sadness and exactly. you know, anxiety and all these different things? And we just kind of signed up for it. And some of us may have signed up with an intention to play and some of us may have signed up with an intention to heal and, and kind of, you know, maybe change the perspective or change the, maybe the mindset of some others. I don't know, but I've always thought about that. Yeah. I, I've, I'm on the same page as that. And, and to kind of like put an extra wrapping or an extra layer to the onion also that it's, it's in a way we've chosen to do this because it's some kind of shortcut spiritual growth. Like maybe we're able to have this kind of growth of spirituality, but it takes way longer in that other dimension. Whereas when we come and have a human experience, we can kind of rush the process and go through like really condensed spiritual growth or have the potential to at least. Mm. I always like that idea of um, being the the observer for the universe, right? Like, what's the purpose of life? I think it's just experience. Just to experience as much as you can or to experience the universe. You're like the eyes and the ears of this giant floating universe. All these galaxies, these suns and stars and, you know, all the beauty that life and the infinite universe is capable of producing with nothing to look at it. What's the point of that? You know what I mean? With nothing to observe it. It feels like that is the point, you know, to have someone to see or something to, to witness some consciousness to, to be an observer and experience the beauty of existence, you know? I know exactly where you're coming from. I mean, one of the things my father used to always say to me was everything begins and ends in experience. Just those words, everything begins and ends with experience. And they're like, I've really like, you know, introspectively thought about what those words mean. So I know exactly where you're coming from. What do you think that means? That that sounds pretty deep, but I'd have to unpack that. What do you think that that means? What do you think he meant when he said that to you? I don't think... So, for example, I think we've talked about this in the past, saying about how um, the differences in terms of like Zen Buddhism and Stoicism and like how you look at goals and like long term things. And I guess to put it into simplistic, um, simple terms, like it's it's not the 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 goal of where you're getting to. It's it's always it's not the pursuit of happiness it's happiness of pursuit it's it's the happiness of just going through the motions it's it's pure joy and just going through what you're going through and there is no attachment to oh i need this other thing to happen i need that person to like me i need to get to the end of the rainbow it's all bullshit it's just you're loving going through the motions of whatever it is you're going through and that's all there is to it it's, it's just the pure happiness of the pursuit of whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever it calls to you. It might be MMA for one person. It might be volleyball coaching for snow. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just whatever calls to you. Whatever you know energizes you. I guess that makes sense. I would. Yeah, I would really have to think about that though. Everything it's begins fine. and ends with experience. Find what you do that you love and do it and everything will come. I yeah. always had that mindset. And yeah, Something for me, it's calls all, all. to you. Certain things like call out to you and they draw you in. But it's, it's your it's your power to also reject those callings. You don't have to answer the call, but you could choose to answer the call. And that's the interesting thing about life. You can choose to answer certain calls and there might be quite a few. I think a lot of people are also just afraid. They may have a calling and it may be crystal clear to do it, but they're just afraid to do it. 
because they may That's feel like, true. oh, it's not going to make me enough money or, oh, it's going to make me uncomfortable or, you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I mean, there's usually a thousand reasons not to do something so people can easily make excuses not to do things. For sure. It's, it's, better, it's better to be honest with yourself and just say why you don't want to do that thing rather than like come up with an excuse because anyone could come up with an excuse. There's a million reasons not to do things. Absolutely. There's there's definitely a million reasons. There's so many different ways that people dilute themselves into thinking that they don't need to do something that they really should do. They really actually want to do. Yeah. But uh, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, just family pressure, man. Family pressure is huge. Yeah, it's massive. If you don't have a lot of family pressure, I feel like you have almost a superpower in life. Just do what you want to do. <laughs> I mean, that I can I be a whiskey, trap. Man. I want to order something. <laughs> Doing what you want to do can be fun, but it also leaves you down some dark rooms. Uh, you mean you like don't want to go... hedonistically doing what yeah, you want to do? Yeah, you don't want to do like full-blown hedonistically what you want when you want all the time, you know? No, that's true. But that's one thing you kind of have to remind yourself too. Like, for example, I've kind of finally gotten back into working out after over a year after my accident. And, um, you got, got to remind yourself like, no, this is actually what I want to do. You know, if I was not in the situation where I'm just about to go to the gym and I'm deciding if I want to go or not, I, I want to go. Do you know what I mean? It's just the, in this moment, maybe I don't want to. Maybe in this exact moment, um, it feels like too much or it feels like, you know, I'm tired or whatever, but outside of that moment i know that's what i want for myself that's what i want to do and you have to like remind yourself of that that's discipline in a nutshell man doing things that you actually you want to do, do but you know you got to do <laughs> it's it's yeah it's i i feel like discipline people will say that like doing what you don't want to do but i i feel like it's discipline is doing what you want to do um without any caveats do you know what i mean without any excuses so it's like remembering what you want to do and doing it when you you don't feel like doing it you know what i mean when your body is yeah. not ready it's like remembering your goal right because actually that is what you want to do like <laughs> You know, I want yeah, to learn Japanese, guess, yeah. for instance, you know what I mean? I really want to do it. But when it comes to actually, like, doing it and, and you know, putting in the time, there's, like, there's a, there's a resistance there, right? That's not, yeah. that's not, I don't want to do it. I actually want that. <laughs> it's just, there's resistance, yeah. Overcoming resistance. That's that's really real discipline is overcoming resistance. Being consistent. Absolutely. Just like uh grinding on StarCraft, hey? <laughs> are you doing any like uh research as well or are you just, just pumping out games? Uh every day we spend some time learning. We focus a lot on TVZ yesterday night. What did you learn from yesterday night? Well, the biggest thing right now that's challenging about ladder is I'm not comfortable yet on the new maps. It's like all new maps, man. There's like five I want to ban. I can only ban three. <laughs> <laughs> what are your so, to be fair, like now? some of them are pretty okay for Terran though, if you can if you can figure them out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my bands currently are Minstrel, Monty Hall, and Kickback. I but can see I Minstrel because that's hard to, but you could probably put Kickback in there, can't you? Kickback, it's, it's crazy. No, 
It's just new maps, man. Like, I really don't like Pantheon too much. I've been playing it. Uh, it's not horrible. The more and more I'm playing it. Dominator, I'm not the biggest fan of. I think this one isn't the best either. I've been like fucking six racks middle of the map against Zergs on this map. Like, yeah, that map maker doesn't know how to cut pizza, man. <laughs> I thought Deja Vu was really bad at first, but the more I'm playing it, it's like not horrible. It's like, okay, I guess it's playable. Yeah. I don't want to play Fine Spirit, but here we are. I've had it banned for like eight ladder seasons, but here we go. <laughs> playing Fine Spirit again. Is it really Just in the win. map pool again? God damn it. Why is it in the pool again? I don't understand why Vermeer never came back. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Like Vermeer was like such a good map, dude. It was very good. Way better than Fighting Spirit. Well, that's sure. Fighting Spirit, yeah. I mean, <laughs> apples and oranges. I'm actually cool with Radeon at this point. I think it's fine. We got Polypoid again. Which is like sure they brought back polypoid and not vermeer that's so weird that is that is really strange yeah maybe they'll eventually bring back vermeer i don't know how to feel about monty hall i've been hearing a lot of mixed things like a lot of terrans are like this map's good for us a lot of terrans are like veto it yeah like, i'm not sure no no you should you should like monty hall it's it's, it's pretty good for you why it's just a lot harder for like Zerg to navigate on it. And I don't think TVP is like too unfavorable for you. There's even like some cheeses you can do on it. Do you know how to do the barracks cheese where you build ba two barracks and you build a gas and you mine out their wall, transferring the minerals to gas using the refinery nearby? I think Flash did? Yeah. Never done it before. You can also do lots of like factory cheeses on that map. Vulture drop builds. There's loads of stuff you can do on it. It's pretty okay for term. Yeah, one 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 is yeah, great just, versus Zerg there. I think my biggest thing about it is like I'm trying to get better at the game and I'm trying to improve and I'm trying to just play like stock standard and just get better mechanically. And our map pool is like fucking dog shit for that. It's like every map I have to play something weird. Like kickback, you can't just play straight up. You have to play like probably one 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 or Volt Drop or Two Port Wraith or some shit in TVZ and then TVP is I don't know probably not horrible but you're probably going to face a lot of Nexus first and you know. I think the best thing on Kickback for TVZ would be the Fantasy Vulture Tank push. You should learn that. It's so it's so good right now. It's crazy crazy strong on a bunch of Vulture different Vulture Tank push. No um, Valkyrie Tank sorry. <laughs> Look what Wolfix said in your chat, Love Snow. Stretch your brain a little bit with different ideas where you actually have to think instead of playing standard like a robot all the time. Yeah, I, I heard it. <laughs> I read it too. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. All right, Wolfix. I haven't been playing one on one for 10 years, man. <laughs> a quick, quick yeah. uh, bathroom break from me. I'll be right back. You guys keep talking. Sounds good. When was the last time you interacted with Wolfix, Love Snow? I talk to Wolfix daily. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Has he been Wolf. helping you out? I actually wanted to share with you. Remember you had those questions about the Hydrogen stuff? So I talked to Hawk about it. It's on my last VOD from yesterday. From 1.09 a.m. to... Or, sorry, not 1.09. From uh, 1.09 to 1.12. I actually wrote it down on the notepad. Sorry. <laughs> I remember I wanted to share that with you, Wolf. Because he was talking to me about, like, well, he, not not just me, but we were just kind of trying to figure out when do we, when do Zergs take their Hydrogen in TVC on, like, a standard, like, two hatch muta against, like, you know, Rax command center build. Mm. Yeah, he wanted to get in detail about it, Wolfix. What did he say? Uh, like, between like seven and nine minutes typically, but it's like a lot of factors involved. I've described a couple different scenarios. Is yeah, isn't like seven like the basic, but it can change based on the time, like what what happens in the game, and like if we're not seven they... and nine minutes. Wolf. Yeah, I mean, it just has it just depends on like 
how many Mitas they want to make. Like, whether or not they're trying to fight fight the Marine with Mita, or... Like, it depends also how quick Terran's teching, and there's a lot of factors. No. I'd have to actually probably rewatch those couple minutes that I talked to Hawk about it, just to fully grasp it again. And if they take it at seven minutes, they should have like lurkers almost hatching at nine minutes, right? Sorry, I missed what you said. What'd you say, though? If they're if they're doing the if they're getting the den ready around seven minutes, they should have lurkers ready around nine minutes, right? Well, the big thing Hawk was explaining was if they get a den that quick, you have to just go against like, across the map and try to bust them. Because they're not gonna have meters. Or not they're not gonna have as many meters. Yeah. Well that makes sense. Especially if you're Forax or something. Yeah, basically, Zerg gives up presence on the map when they go uh, Den, if they take it quickly. That's why they usually delay it and get lots of Mita, because they're uh, trading with Marine. He's like, Hawk was explaining, like, Mita just oh. outscales Magic Marine. Well, until that, Magic Marine have tech support, that, like, not that's... Invested. That, in my opinion, is the issue of Zerg versus Terran, is transitional points of weakness in tech choices for Zerg. So it's very difficult to know when to transition into the next tech phase or whatever. Um, and Terran is like geared up to exploiting Zerg's transitional points of weakness in the mid-game, which is where most of their win percentage comes from, in my opinion. Yeah, that's what makes the best Terrans the best Terrans, man. They just, they just know yeah. these windows so well. They see things with scan, and they're just like, okay, this is how I have to react. This is how much time I have to go for the bust on whatever it is, or go for the push on whatever it is. Yeah, sometimes those windows are razor thin. It's crazy. It's super razor thin sometimes, man. It's like literally like lurker eggs are like three seconds away from hatching, but you kill all the colonies, you get on top of the lurkers. Yeah, you yeah. yeah, it's like sometimes it does come down to like three second windows. It's kind of fucking wild. Yeah. It's, if, um, if you hit those windows, it makes it look unbeatable, though. Like, oh my god, how do you ever, how do you ever hold this off? But yeah. it is just so razor thin. Yeah, like some some zergs I play against, man, their meter micro is so good. It just feels like, man, I can never get on the map. And the next thing I know, we're mid late game, and it's like they're three bases. Lurkers, Defilers, and Scourge, and I'm just like, what do I do, man? I'll be like 200, 200, can't bust anything and just lose from that situation. It's like, what the fuck? And it's like, man, just feel unbustable. At least, I, I, I don't know, I feel like, um, at least with TVZ, you have that transitional point, like where the Zerg is switching over where you have some moments where you're like, okay, if I get in here with some drops or, you know, I bust a position, we could win this, right? You, you get map control pretty much no matter what in that, like, there's like a window in the mid game. As long as you have enough bio, you've got your tech going, they're transitioning into hive. You can get out on the map and put some pressure on and like, see if you can find a way back into the game. Whereas when it's, Versus Protoss, then they're just taking bases like crazy, and they've got you trapped in your base. It's like, there, there's nothing you can do. Like, <laughs> doesn't matter how much, you know. You, you never get map control back if you fall a little bit behind against Protoss. From Zerg perspective, you're saying? I'm just from a Terran perspective, yeah. From a Terran perspective, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, like, I understand it so much better than every every other matchup. TVP. I like. Yeah, like I, I thought I'm like understanding TVT. I thought I was understanding TVT, but there's I'm not like there's so much more to it that I'm understanding. And like I really feel like the map pool is like not helping me because I'm still like not comfortable on these maps yet. I don't know like all the different routes people are taking and what's the common locations to hold and things like that. No, I was finally getting comfortable on the last ladder set, man. After like however long those maps were in the pool playing pretty much all the maps besides like fs and then i had eventually got down to banning both the two-player maps because i was tired of fucking playing against Protoss, getting gas stolen and gateways and so annoying no, fs is a nightmare i hate that map so much <laughs> <laughs> yeah
Yeah, it's pretty terrible. I'm not gonna lie. Not even I that. I just can't get myself to play kickback, man. Kickback? Yeah, I can't handle it. It like it can't even be that bad for Terran. I mean, we get three bases, but I don't know. It just seems weird. If if you're my brutal opinion, I think you're you're just looking at it through a lazy lens. You don't want to have to think outside the box to take advantage of the, the jump. The fact that you got those three guesses, you know what I mean. You're looking to play pretty cookie cutter each time, right? I've been trying to just work on my standard play. I feel like that's what's going to get me better. That's what I mean. Yeah, you're you're looking for ways of like playing something super straight up. But that's not necessarily going to develop you as a player, though, either. Like, you need to be able to, you know, think fluidly. Trust me, Love Snow's got a lot of cheese in his pocket, man. Well, it's not just about the cheeses. It's literally about like being able to, like, you know, on the fly, technical solve and shit. Yeah. I don't think even on the fly, like between games, looking at a map and thinking, like, how can I abuse this? geography how can i abuse this position yeah figure it out yourself yeah really love snow like um close positions on kickback i really feel like valkyrie tank push is going to be incredibly strong the main reason being that um the entrance is pretty wide and you can actually shoot up also into the other bases if you get the tanks close enough you can start to hit stuff that's in those like back expansions. And then if you're just slowing down the Zerg enough, like you're just pounding at the sunken colonies and forcing them into um like a, a kind of a rough transition where they have to throw away a lot of stuff or build a huge amount of sunken colonies. Those gases on high ground that they get, like, oh yeah, they get a quick three gases, right? Those gases run out so fast, they'll burn out before the main gas does. So they're on like a really serious timer where they have to get out on the map and get another base up. On Wait, so the uh -huh. the gas geysers at the two bases on kickback are less mineral or less gas? Way than less. 5, yeah. Yeah. Really? Like, I didn't know that. It's like three thousand. And then the mineral patches are like twelve hundred or something like that. Yeah. So mm. I know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's nice to have the extra gas income, but it's a very short clock, you know? It's ticking as soon Ten as you minutes. take that. You get, yeah. What is it when, like, yeah. mine out time for in the main gas? Like, 17 21? minutes? 21 is the natural. Oh, natural. Out on a regular map. But, um, yeah, it's like 19 minutes, something like that. Well, it depends when you start yeah. mining it, right? Right. But like from the time of mining it with three, yeah, you're looking at like 17, 18 minutes. And yeah, your it's... and the natural and the third will mine up before the main. So yeah, it's fast. Yeah, like I, I think mech would actually be pretty good on kickback. For TVZ, for instance. Yeah, you can transition like the fantasy push into mech. Just start making vultures and lay a bunch of mines as you retreat. You can you can also do like for for Terran, it's fine to be on two base, right? So here's like the big Terran advantage is you take one of the bases as your natural and you just play two base. And then when that like natural starts to mine out, you just move the command center over to the other base and just start mining there. And like, or you just, you know, you build another command center over there. But in most matches, you'll have to, um, you know, stretch out somewhere on the map to grab another base. This one, it's already inside your base, so you don't really need to move out at all. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to, you don't have to get exposed to take another base. So you can be on two base for a very long time on that map. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's not a bad map for, for Terran. <clears throat> I, I would think, say a lot yeah. of those maps are pretty okay for Terran in the new map pool. Besides, like, Flying Spirit, I don't know anything about that, but... I really I mean, like I really like what Shine did on that map in KCM. Like, the, the 
guardian push. I thought it was really smart. Kind of avoiding yeah. the, the issues that I was just talking about. But you can see it depends it. on where you spawn on that map though, right? Like that that's the thing though. Like um someone in um Love Snow's chat was talking about it's hard to develop strategies per each map. Well obviously, but it's not just per each map, it's also per map spawn. Like yeah. just by buying horizontal or cross map on that on kickback completely changes the entire game. And probably you are ne needing a completely different strategy to get the better of your opponent. Yeah, well, otherwise you might be falling behind. I wouldn't necessarily go for um, that fantasy push cross map. That would definitely be like a close position type of build. So you'd have to figure out like a different strategy for for cross map and and scout them out and figure out what what the position is early on to make that decision. <sighs> Just when everything was feeling comfortable. Yeah, just got to make us uncomfortable again. Thanks, Blizzard. Hey, that's where you grow, man, is when you get outside your comfort zone, right? Yeah. We've been playing a lot more uh, Vulture Dropship, man. And TBZ, be just because the maps are different now. <laughs> yeah, you got to be a bit uncomfortable being uncomfortable for a while while you familiarize yourself with it. Just remember everyone else is going through the same thing. It's not like you're the only one that's going to be feeling like iffy about the maps. So will pretty much everyone else. Kind of. I don't know. I feel like the Koreans have probably been playing it for a while, man. Yeah, maybe they're the exception, but yeah, they're not going to be the only ones you're worried about on the ladder. Yeah, only 95%. There's like a lot of lazy, lazy people out there too, man. If you just put in like a little bit of extra effort, you can get a huge advantage, I would say. A lot of people just like not even look at the map before queuing up. Well, that's the thing. You don't have to really yeah. like wring every drop of juice out of the fruit, but you have to squeeze it a little bit, you know, squeeze it hard enough to get the majority of juice out for the minimal effort, you know? Yeah, like, I mean, when I first played on Pantheon, I was like, bro, this map's fun. And, like, now that I've played it, you know, five to ten times, I think it's actually okay. If you can just control certain spots, it's actually not bad for T. I had some great TVP wins on it just by abusing the fact that Protoss didn't understand there were certain spots that he had to fight over. The map makers are smart, man. They are really, really intelligent. They have some incredible ideas. And um, the forethought that goes into a lot of these maps is pretty impressive. Oh my gosh. It makes me think... Uh, you're talking about map makers being smart. Dude, Fighting Spirit has all these trees in the middle of the map. I literally played a TVT today yeah. where I missed 12 shots on a vulture. Well, that's... Oh, the, the, the Fighting Spirit was made like... Fuck, I don't even know how long ago. 15 years ago? Something like that? Yeah, a long time ago. They, they've learned a lot since then. They've, they've gotten a lot smarter since then. <laughs> like Monty Hall, same thing, right? That was a really old map. I like, think why fighting... the fuck is Monty Hall back in the map pool, man? Although, I think put it fighting... In ASL. Yeah, it's... Uh, they're oh! kind of going, going through the old maps again. Yeah, they, I think Fighting Spirit did a, did us a service though. Like Fighting Spirit really taught us a lot more about the dynamics of Terran versus Protoss because you would think instinctively, just learning about Terran and how Terran works, that those high ground expansions at twelve, six, three, and nine, you'd think, oh, those are really good for Terran. They're high ground expansions. That's that's super good. But you don't think about the double edged sword of how hard it is for Terran to push up those ramps to take out Protoss bases, to siege and re unsiege and to scan up the ramp and to make sure there's always something on top of the ramp to spot for the tanks to shoot up it and all that bullshit, right? Yeah, and, uh, just give me Protoss that don't play Reaver, man. I'm happy. Yeah, the benefits of having Reaver. The strength of having early Reaver into stopping yeah. Terran from taking a third is insane. But So even though some of these maps are trash, I think they taught us a lot about the game as well. Sure, sure. But I think that it's, it's kind of a good move from uh, ASL or SSL now to bring back like an old map rather than throw in like a completely insane new map you know like instead of throwing in like a 76 or something like that they're just like okay 
let's just grab like an older map that we know is crazy but is kind of figured out yeah you know, i really like it it's a good idea uh, i still I really have played zero games in Monty Hall. it's a fun map snow it's not bad did you see uh soul key play against who is that best or something on best, Monty yeah so keep bottom that, right. Was that left. week one? Uh, yeah. yeah. That was a crazy I I game. <laughs> I think I skipped it, man. I skipped the PVZs a lot of the time. No way. Oh my god. What a wild one. Yeah, yeah. that was a crazy game. Yeah. It's worth a watch, huh? For that sure. one is, yeah. Yeah, that was um, a proxy. Please check out some of it. A proxy from best, which led into like a really wild uh, air battle. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Really, really impressive stuff from Solki, man. Solki is just at such a crazy level. He's like, uh, if he if he keeps winning ASLs, I feel like he's gonna reach like flash level. Really, <laughs> like the... he's a close. He's close. God, he's very close. Yeah, Bonjour? Like yeah, Bonjour. Bonjour. He's, well, God he already level. is kind of like a Zerg Bonjour already. It's just like, is he going to reach the the level of Bonjour that is Flash yeah. as a Zerg? Well, hasn't he? What well, he's back to back winner right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's really been like performing. top four in the last like fucking five seasons yes, or something. Yes, yes, Hero's yeah. really been like trailblazing and not able to fucking come through to it. Hero is in a position like a like a Jadong during Flash Flash era, you know, where it's like if not for Too Flash, for Hero, Jadong would have been, you know, yeah, killing it and like getting all the medals and stuff or all the the so trophies, but. Flash is always there, kind of cucking him in the end. It's hero, hero is kind of so good. Spot. Yeah, hero is so fucking good as well. Like it's crazy to think about like how much of a chasm there is in skill between even like the very best of the players. It's kind of madness. Kind I of feel, feel like for hero man. If Soma didn't go to the military, man, he'd be freaking going top four every time too. Maybe totally I mean, different I, style from yeah. maybe, hero, but, but maybe, but I, I'm not too sure he'd be. You know, necessarily out competing Solki right now, though. So. Yeah, Solki's a big hurdle, and I feel like Soma's style maybe a little more map dependent. Yeah, potentially. Maybe a little bit. if it's like a good map pool for him, I think he can be really, really strong. But I don't think I don't this know. map pool is very favoring Zergs. Honestly, I feel like this map pool is like a little bit skewed against Zergs. Even I think it's more. It's pretty Terran favored. Obviously, by only a few percentiles, but obviously that's a big deal at the highest level, right? A few percentiles is going to make a big fucking difference. So yeah, I think it's slightly more, slightly more Protoss, uh, Terran favored, and then a little bit Protoss over Zerg, but not a lot. It's only a few maps like Minstrel where it's really like seeming like Protoss, uh, and then Monty Hall seems like Protoss has got a bit of an edge over Zerg. But uh, as far as Terran's concerned, it seems like they got a little bit of an edge over the other two races on most of the maps. Yeah, God, Minstrels feels really hard for Zerg to pull off. Yeah. Every game we've it's seen. Well. Every game we've seen is just Protoss like poking into different areas and then rotating and Zerg like trying to run lurkers around and just getting stuck everywhere. And Reva's nothing... getting way too much value. <laughs> yeah. And nothing can rotate properly on the defense of Zerg. It's so hard. Yeah. There's so many path, path so many paths. Paths. So many yeah, but it, paths. It's so much to to think about, and there's so many difference to the like how long it takes to get around certain paths, and calculating that in your brain on the fly to like get your army to like synchronize flanks and whatnot. It's it's absolute nightmare. Not to mention the actual pathing of the units themselves to not like get themselves stuck along the way. Like say like the mineral because there's like two eggs in the mineral wall on these like fourth bases. The units can really get stuck in those gaps trying to get through and shit. It gets wild, man. That's freaking six attack paths on Minstrel, man. That's crazy. Yeah. O only the pros can make that map look even remotely fluid, and even then it looks a bit crazy chaotic. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about Zerg on that map. Even against Terran, like... Same. It's not great. 
the. There's no easy third for no the Zerg. Third. It's Terran. And it's a two player map. It's, um, like, there's, there's just not enough space to find, no. find bases. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be a real struggle this season, but it's a struggle. It feels like it's a great test, a struggle that's a great test for Soul Key, right? Like, if he can overcome yeah. maps, it, it would be similar. Like, that's that's Flash level. Do you know what I mean? Jeez. Where I would say so. If, like, if, he's, if he's, like, beating all the best players on even these maps like Minstrel, I would certainly say so. Yeah, it's like the season where ASL tried to diminish flash by you know making the maps really really hard for Terran. There? yeah they're just like okay let's just make an anti-flash map pool all the terrans get knocked out flash is the <laughs> only terran remaining and he just bashes everybody that type of shit was That's... that the year he beat snow in the finals i actually can't remember but i think that was his that was his last finals hmm. so probably yes Man, why do you guys think Flash didn't come back this season? Like, even try to play in qualifiers? Because he doesn't want him. He doesn't want to like dull the lights before they've had time to shine brightly. You know what I mean? Like, like he just wants to doesn't come in feel strong. like he's that. Yeah, strong he, he, there's there's no way he would come close to being like able to place like top eight, top sixteen this time reliably, right? But if he waits and plays the next one, he's got a way stronger chance of like actually smashing through the group stages and what have you, and yeah, having a way better, stronger showing, and stealing a lot of the limelight as well. Hmm. I don't know. I I think it would be better for his pub public image if he would have come. And played this season, and maybe just does lost. Still, <laughs> does he still stream? People would like him more. I mean, they no, he, he doesn't. They, they were they were they were still showing images of him in like the the media for this SSL, even yeah. though he's not there. There is still showing yeah. his face over everything. True. In a way, he's keeping the hype train going by not showing up. In my opinion, they're going to be mm. psyched for it coming next time around. That's possible. Whereas, if he has like a media, if he comes back too early, has a premature, like mediocre performance, the hype train is going to die down a lot more for the next SSL. You know what I mean? Whereas if he just kind of, you know, is a little bit of a no show and then suddenly comes in strong on the next one, people are going to be way more hyped for that. I thought he was going to start sure. streaming again, but it seems like he's uh, holding off for now. I don't think he wants to or... deal with backlash. Yeah. I think he's. You think that's what it is, or is he actually just like hiding that. everything? He wants to just like figure out things in, in the shadows and then return out of nowhere. I, yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of like you know waiting for things to blow over so he doesn't have to deal with like you know people talking shit about what happened in the past. I think it's also yeah hiding his power level a little bit while he figures the game out because I imagine he's going to be really thinking about the game critically and like how Terrans can you know problem solve the modern meta and whatnot because he's going to be a little bit behind curve trying to catch up with how people are not how people are thinking but how he needs to adjust people's thinking because he's going to come up with his own solutions to problems he's going to reverse engineer things back from square one and then figure out what the actual solution is so it's going to take him probably a long time to figure out a lot of those solutions hmm that was so funny i uh did replay casts of him versus i think it was motive and um motive stomped him like five games in a row and just Damn. simple um you know two robo reaver play and just you know mass expansion completely overwhelmed flash over and over and over again and then i think it was like two weeks later they played again and flash swept him like 4-0 just smoked him yeah. And it, at the end of the 5-0 with Motive winning, Flash was like, so like, what am I doing wrong? And Motive said, like, oh, you know, you're going for the upgrade style is no longer, you know, standard. It's not really good anymore. It's, it leaves you too open. And then <laughs> it's like he said too much. The next time he came back, Flash played more, like, uh, standard like modern style and just absolutely crushed him it was crazy 
Hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoy playing TVP, man. Killing probes is probably one of my favorite things in the game. <laughs> satisfying, right? Oh, it's so satisfying. Have you studied then, Sharp's uh, gameplay much? Yeah, actually, I took one out of his playbook, man. I've been opening, um, like, Fact Expand, but skipping Vulture, going straight out on, going into mm. quick speed. Mm. Two Vulture run by, dude. It's so good. I've got, like, I think, like, out of the five games I've used it, I think I'm 5 0 with it. Nice. Damn. Mixing in uh, Starport right after, dude. It's been so strong. Like second factory starport, it's like they're they're just so scared of that run by man. They got all their goons at the front. They got all their goons blocking these locations, and they just like drop in the main. And it's just like wide open. Are you making second factory then starport or factory starport factory? Factory starport sometimes, sometimes two factory then starport. Just depends okay. what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm like I'm like killing bases with pylon walls because like the drop is so unexpected. <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah, sounds decent, man. There's infinite variability in that game, man. So much fun. That's what makes it so good. Well, There's even on a chessboard, even on a chessboard with like just eight by eight grid squares, like there's more possible moves than there are like atoms in the universe in terms of like possible board states. So now imagine StarCraft with like a way bigger grid with way more unit variation and so much more that could potentially happen on the map. So yeah, we've got like a quantum computer of possibilities and we see like crazy things like we saw in the SSL. I don't know, if, is, is it okay to spoil things or should we avoid talking about what actually specifically happened in the SSL most recently? Let's just avoid spoilers. Oh. Yeah, but we saw some crazy yeah. games in the SSL, like, you know, like one in a 10,000 game scenario type thing. You know what I mean? That uh, Yeah, it's always interesting to see what what kind of craziness you can, you can get. Because even if you do play games that look more or less the same, there's so many intricate variations happening. And eventually you get completely wild games out of the ether that seem to like, yeah, be more like true poker more than mm. more than StarCraft. Yeah. I don't know, my, my like camera was like bugging out, so I had to fix it right now. And I just remembered like the shirt I'm wearing right now, dude. Streamlabs actually sent me this shirt in the mail. <laughs> we like hit some gold and like got like gold on Streamlabs for some fucking reason. Don't know exactly what it is. I think it was like hitting a certain number of like subs and followers or something. I was like so proud about it. I was like, hell yeah, dude, we got a shirt. <laughs> nice man. That's awesome. Congratulations, dude. The best shirts are free. Oh man, I've been thinking a lot recently about um Love Snow when I sent you that uh that video about uh Stormgate. And uh oh, gosh. you had such a reaction on stream. Dude, uh, I had a bunch of people send me send me a link to Ardo's stream. Ardo watched my my reaction on his on his channel <laughs> no way really oh man you gotta send me yeah. that you gotta yeah. send me that i, I saw I like, see that like if you got it uh i can look for it i'll look for it right now but hold on my uh my booze just got here go down so pick that up real quick i'll definitely take a shot right now give me a moment guys sure <laughs> no worries that's um that's funny oh man artosis i can't imagine being there <laughs> Like, imagine being on that couch. I remember they were all sitting on couches um, with microphones casting mm. those games. There was, like, four casters. And yeah. they, they were all talking about such random shit. That Just to fill sequence. the space, because yeah. they don't even know what to talk about on the screen, because it's, like, very non-engaging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Spiritual successor of StarCraft and and uh, World Warcraft Three. It's like God damn. That's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. Just, I couldn't even bring myself to play it much. Love Snow's reaction was just so classic. <laughs> what was his reaction like? He just he he got so sad when he saw 
Celestial uh, versus yeah. Celestial. It was like, yeah. this is what people have been waiting for. <laughs> people have spent money to watch this or to get this yeah. game. People have backed to this, you know, on Kickstarter for years. Been waiting a long time for it. Been really hyped about it. I don't know how many years that was in development, but it feels like a long time. I think really it was quite a long time. time, yeah. And then the spiritual Even... successor is just it's not it's not quite there. Yeah. Like if Either... if you're looking for a spiritual successor to a great RTS game, I feel like Beyond All Reason is where you should look. That's like a true spiritual successor. The total annihilation. Yeah, that that definitely does total our nation justice. Whereas Absolutely. Stormgate doesn't do much of anything justice. It, it kind of like almost makes fun of Warcraft Three and Starcraft. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like playing off of people's wish for like a revisit of that. Yeah, so I, I'm not. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying this is some kind of conspiracy, but it almost is like what I would expect to to see someone trying to sabotage the genre. You know what I mean? Trying to sabotage what you once loved and kind of, like kind of make fun of it almost. You know, it's weird. Like making a game for the professional scene. You know what I mean? Like how how quickly that can backfire. It feels like so well, under tested. So well, to to be fair, games have been super successful, like StarCraft and especially StarCraft Brutal. I mean, um, they they weren't really planned to be you know super competitive games, right? Mm. They were kind of accidentally successful, yeah. and the, the the devs that did work on those older generation of titles, which were accidentally super successful, don't don't work anymore. So we've got newer generations of people working on these projects, and they're either not as lucky, or not as talented, or not as motivated, or whatever it is. It's just not. It's just not creating. You know, they're not able to put the puzzle together the same way anymore. I think it it requires like smaller dev teams really this is a big thing like as soon as you have so many voices and so much money i feel like it the script it's almost gets doomed lost for failure so yeah it's almost doomed for failure yeah. yeah it's like um concord you hear about the failure of concord oh, yeah. it's just insanity yeah enough i've heard enough uh, what was the most recent thing was it like um all the people that um paid to get early access now have to um restart their games as well because their saves are not going to be updated or something is that right <laughs> i have no idea that sounds that sounds hilarious though my god yeah so all the people that paid like over a hundred bucks to get like pre-orders and they have early access they've now got to completely restart because the game's updates they won't be able to finish the game. They'll get they'll get to a certain point and those saves will not be able to advance. So they have to restart their save files completely fresh. Well, so there's something you're just talking about? It's Concord. Concord. <laughs> oh, Concord. Okay. Dude, um, you know, I figured, you know, this might be the best spot to drop this. I haven't talked about this too much on stream. Um, but this is the Doom Drop podcast. Maybe time to drop something doomy. <laughs> Got some bad news so, or some good news? Oh, I'm terrified, but it, that's going to be amazing. Um, so we were speaking about, you know, you grow most when you're doing uncomfortable things. So I'm, I'm terrified of heights, man. And, uh, you know, don't like sharks either, right? Right. Yeah. I got a guy, man, uh, that wants to collab with me. We're, we've been in contact about this for a bit now. And... Um, we're looking to be sponsored by Red Bull for this event. We're going to oh, do a live stream of us skydiving. <laughs> okay. Go GoPros attached. Uh, apparently, we're going to use some sort of technology that'll be attached to a drone that'll be able to provide us with a Wi-Fi signal that will allow us to be able to keep our Twitches open during this event. Nice. And um, I've never fucking skydived in my life, let alone ever thought about doing it. But this guy is like ex-military. 
I think he was like, not I think he told me he was going into special forces or something, and he's just like an adrenaline junkie. And yeah. And he's a he Twitch really streamer? wants to do this. He's trying to get into it, and he thinks this is like the biggest way for him to to make a name for himself. And uh, he's been very generous on my channel, and have, he's a good friend. And he invited me to be a part of this journey with him. And I'm just like, you know what? I fucking don't like. I have a fear of heights. I feel like if I do this, I'm gonna be able to kill that fear. That's why I'm thinking about it. You know? Yeah, man confronting and, your fear i think definitely and like same thing with sharks man he wants to go underwater into a shark cage with great white oh. sharks wow and Ooh. i'm just like oh my god this is terrifying as well i don't like sharks <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you really hit me in two places that i don't want to be doing well, i <laughs> thought you were going to combine the two i thought you were going to say something crazy like you were going to skydive into a, a pool of sharks or something i was thinking where's oh, he going to go with it because you said you had a fear of a fear of heights and a fear of sharks and you started bringing <laughs> this up and i was like where's he going to go with this no two separate events I don't know how near in the future these are going to take place, but they are already in motion. Red Bull has actually replied already and nice. are kind of uh, looking into the logistics, looking into how we're planning on doing it. And it seems like they're interested in sponsoring the event, which is crazy. Um, Ooh, okay. So, yeah, man. It's, it's something that, to my knowledge, has never been done on Twitch. So, we'd be like the pioneers of doing this. That's but, awesome. You know, I I'm terrified to do it, but I think it's gonna be amazing. An amazing experience. And dude, the viewers are gonna love it, man. <laughs> oh, for sure. Dude, so many people are gonna tune in for that. Yeah, it'd be fucking so, awesome. So that's like uh some big things happening in the Love Snow stream that are coming up. Another uh Another thing that is in the near future, guys, is we got confirmation with Tasteless to run it back. He's hey. down. All right. Um, I, ha I haven't even talked to anybody about this. This is the first time I'm dropping this info right now, Ooh. but I have talked to him on Discord. Um, he's interested in doing it. Right now, he's a little busy with, uh, I think it's Stormgate and some other game that he's doing right now. No. But he mentioned that he's down to do it. And just like last time, I got to find a sponsor for the event. But that's going to happen. So that's going to be pretty cool, too. That's more StarCraft nice, related, man. obviously. But yeah, the other thing is uh, more in real life stuff. Um, we're looking at kind of expanding the Love Snow stream from just being StarCraft to a little bit more in real life stuff as well. Okay. Um, we did a, a stream the other day where I literally just was on Tinder and the chat helped me swipe left or swipe right. <laughs> and it was pretty <laughs> successful. <laughs> <laughs> it was like so hype when we got a match like <laughs> <laughs> let's so go we, we, nice we got some ideas going we're, we're trying to trying to grow a little bit in different areas it's, it's like i've had a lot of people tell me like dude you would do so well if you were just like in a bigger scene like starcraft is such a limited ocean you know that's true yeah 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 it's only a couple hundred viewers at a time, you know, unless like a thousand maybe. But you're in a different world where there's millions of people watching. Your opportunity to grow would be so much larger. So in real life seems like something that we're going to push towards a little bit more. Sounds good. That's that's kind of what I was hoping for is like a, a new game to come out that was going to be, you know, something that a lot of us could get onto. RTS like a new RTS that was gonna be really fun. We could really get behind and have like a larger audience. Something that maybe we could cast together or something. Yeah, we could get into casting and playing on stream, and that more people would be into. We could get like bigger audiences going. Yeah. But it feels like everything's a fucking just a flop, man. It's crazy. Let's go, dude. Let's run it, Stormgate. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah. Okay. Let me find that. Let me find that video, man. I I know I have it somewhere. Um. Fuck. Let's, yeah, I want to see. Marasar, man, you were the one that found me the uh, the video last time. Do you remember where it was? Of Ardo, uh, Ardo watching the the Love Snow reaction.
We'll have to get that up on screen. Got to screen share that to us here. Shouldn't or love snow. Yeah. Are you guys streaming as well right now on Twitch or no? No, no, no. But... no. no. Okay. Are you guys on stream on YouTube or no? No, no we're just recording. Okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. Yeah, thanks for allowing me to stream this. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Thanks for coming on, man. It's nice to hang out with Absolutely. you guys again. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate the invitation. I know it's been a been a couple a couple weeks in progress here. <laughs> we can never line it up properly. <laughs> Three different time zones kind of awkward, yeah. Yeah. But it worked out. Was, I was actually completely free today. So it worked. Nice. Yeah, this is kind of our usual KCM time when we started this. It's always like late night for you, early morning saying, right? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. It's the way we make it work. Oh, I think MSM isn't there. I'll have to... Let me see. Where was it? Um, I mean, I have to... No, I want the I want the Ardo reaction of it though. Let's see here. Let me see if I can find it. Gotta be not too long ago. Alright, I'll quickly use the washroom and uh, hopefully we'll have it when I get back. Alright. Alright. Can't remember how many days ago it was. I'm curious what his reaction was to what you were doing. Yeah, that's, that's why we watched it, man. I couldn't even like bring myself to play that game very much. Like I tried to pump myself up to play it, but I couldn't really. Yeah, I found it. I found it. I found it. All right, link me that. Okay, it's at um here. What's up, Igloo? And then it's at 22. Roughly around there it starts. OK. We'll wait, wait for saying. Let me see exactly when it starts. Now a little bit further ahead. Okay, more so here. Let me change. Let me edit this. Can you just can you just share your screen? Oh yeah, I can do that too. Let me know if you can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Let's mm, on the screen. Okay. You've got music you going. You've got music going in the back. Let me do it for a moment. All right. I'm going to raise this volume a little bit so you can hear him better. Okay. 300. Did you see the June bug placed third at Supernova playing Donkey Kong? Yeah, it was sick. It is like beating a four poodle on bloodbath. With Cheers, salut, gun bear, everybody. Smash content, I always have to recommend the Smash 64 combo contest. It is so hype. Oh, I never, I never saw that. I actually, I played a ton of Smash 64 with my brother when we were kids. We loved that game. <sighs> I think it was Shield Battery and Joe Megan. All we did that was were, uh, each other. He played Donkey Kong and I played Kirby. We just like grabbed each other off. Telling Artie to watch this or something. So stupid. <laughs> okay. Let's watch this. Let's see what this is. God, I was so drunk when I saw this, man. So this is Love Snow. <laughs> we we raid him a lot. Okay, let's see. Oh, no. Exactly. I'm actually like going to cry right now, guys. <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it, but there's, no, there's so many people that have been interested in playing it, and like, 
I actually am <laughs> gonna cry right now. They've been like spending so much time like trying to get good at this game that's absolutely <laughs> fucking trash. <laughs> I'm about to cry right now, dude. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you serious, dude? This is horrible. <laughs> this can't possibly be the best. <laughs> this was, this was, uh... <laughs> what does they he say about that? that out. That was silly that that got through. I can't believe that, that, that those things got through like that. Those games were so silly. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> a giant wall of flesh. Uh it's it's uh, tough. I mean he can't say anything really bad about the game, right? Yeah, he's like he's really he's, he he was trying hard. He was trying hard to stay in character there, man. <laughs> we almost pushed him over the edge with that one. Yeah, like I almost <laughs> I almost thought he was gonna actually say that it was bad, you know what I mean? Like Yeah. His comment was like, I can't believe this got through. It uh, it already got patched, you know? Yeah. You're just laughing, you know? Like... Uh, I've watched a, a quite a few different, um, like, pro gamers who've been trying to play Stormgate and, like, their different gripes about the game and, like, things that have been pretty bad. Like, uh, apparently there's, like, dog meta where for the past you know, weeks. You basically only make dogs. Uh, Vanguard versus Vanguard. <laughs> and a dog is like a scout. You just build scouts. And then you have like 50 scouts fighting 50 scouts. You know what I mean? And then whoever wins that fight wins the game. And that's it. And it's really, and really I guess silly. They're, 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 they're kind of forced into that because if one of them tries to transition away, they won't have as many scouts as the other guys, like yeah. Vulture Wars and TVT or, or something. Or like right? Zergling, Zergling Battle or something. Yeah, dude. yeah. Yeah. Except there's no like, oh, you just build Sunkins and then you can transition to Mutas, you know what I mean? Or there's no like, I just build a wall and then, you know, a bunker and then maybe I can transition to tank. You know, no. or if they're not paying attention for a second, I can slip a tank out and then it's going to help me in the fight. Right. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what it, I don't know what's the solution to that or if they're, they've already patched it or what, but apparently it was weeks, weeks that players oh were doing that. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. And then of course, yeah, there was that whole like, um, I can't remember what morph core or whatever. Yeah. Meta. That was just so brutal that uh, if you're playing anything other than Celestial, they would just send a Morph Core at you and it would just kill your workers before you could even get any anti-air out. Then you just couldn't play. It's like, how did... I mean... How did that wow. go through? Exactly. Yeah. Artosis, how did that go through? <laughs> I feel like the game creators like just don't know how to like aren't just like they're not high level rts players man they just don't know <laughs> I, I swear they have hard high level rts players in their i'm sure team, they do right? have they have to test it right like i'm sure that they, they must be but the, it's kind of weird that that even is possible to slip through yeah or that they wouldn't patch it within like a day you know what i mean yeah that, that they would do something sooner to fix it rather than just let that ride out for so long yeah, I'm I'm not too impressed with the game. I mean, maybe someday it'll be good, but it feels like it's got such a long way to go and they've already kind of burned a lot of the goodwill, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. If I'm looking at games, like, it's another really small game, Love Snow. I don't think you've, you might not have heard of it, Beyond All Reason. Have you heard about that game? I've seen you playing it a lot. It's... I see the Discord message on your oh, yeah. like update status, fucking showing you playing it. Yeah, I've never been, played it though. Been playing it a lot. It's a uh, total annihilation remake. style RTS. Yeah, pretty much like a remake of it. 
Man, what I've been wanting to do for so long, dude. Like, ladder just reset in D2 Hardcore. Or D2 LOD. Mm. I want to play D2 LOD Hardcore, man. <laughs> with, like, a group of homies. I think that'd be so fun. That would be kind of fun. Or, what would be so fun, too, and I know this is troll to some people. I know Zun, it's against his values, but... <laughs> There's no Five way, man. man hardcore WoW classic group, dude. Oh, man. That'd be so fun, man. I've Five never dedicated really played WoW. Principles, man. Just like it's only set it up for like, you know, man. once a week. We play for like a couple hours, you know, nothing crazy. We don't all go crazy on it. I think that'd be so fun. <laughs> yeah. I think you should try this uh, Beyond All Reason, man. It's, it's actually a spiritual successor. It's... It, I they've thrown that term around a lot with Stormgate, but Beyond All Reason is a real spiritual successor where they've taken the principles and like the idea of total annihilation and they've just upgraded it in every way. Like yeah. there's all these different quality of life improvements. There's huge amounts of like just it it's just better in pretty much every direction you can play. 8 versus 8, 16 versus 16, uh, even 32 versus 32. Like, you can get, like, massive squads of people together to play this. Um, yeah, it seems the most runs, popular mode is 8v8. <laughs> yeah, it runs really, really smooth. And they put in this, like, amazing idea where they kind of combined the best elements of Brood War ma um, custom games with, like um like an auto play system where like do you know how in brood war you make a custom lobby and you put the name and everything and then as soon as that game's over you have to remake the lobby and everybody has to yeah. rejoin in beyond all reason you make a lobby people join when the game ends uh it the lobby automatically remakes and everybody's in the same lobby again do you know what i mean like mm. and then there's like a join queue so like you can join the lobby and watch the game in progress and then when the lobby when the game ends the lobby re refreshes it starts over again like you don't have to rejoin and if somebody leaves then someone in the join queue automatically gets added you know what i mean so like there's always like new people coming in and you never have to you know search for a game and like hope to get your spot back do you know what i mean it's just you're automatically in there. You just hit ready, and you're ready to go for the next the next game. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, so good. I wish that they would have done that for StarCraft 2. But, like, the custom game lobbies just died in StarCraft 2 so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Beyond All Reason is, like, uh, like I said, like an actual spiritual successor to Total Annihilation. So much, and fun. it's free, and it's and it's free, free to so play. So it's an easy game to try. Interesting. Hmm. I just saw the trailer for it. Oh yeah, it looks insane. Looks like there's so much going on. There's so <laughs> yeah, no, it's much pretty crazy. On. It feels it, it's slow just, at the beginning, but there's just an insane amount of things. It kind of needs to be slow at the beginning because it like it's like a mushroom trip where it like you know really like gradually <laughs> initiates you into craziness. You know what I mean? It's like a it's like a tree where everybody starts at the base, but there's so many different branches of different directions you can go. Like once you get past that like initial trunk, just go go off into so many different weird directions with all the different types of builds. Like in StarCraft, there's like a, a StarCraft is a tree with like you know ten or twelve different branches, and Beyond All Reason is a tree with like fifty different branches. It's crazy. Damn. Yeah, I mean, there are some very strong ways to play, um, but then also, um, uh, I feel like Beyond All Reason has like branches, like the branches branch into more branches as well because there's like T two and T three, and then there's you know nukes and uh, EMPs, mm. and there's you know water play. Airplay, um, 
There's just so many different things that you There's can... even just like yeah. the buildings that are crazy. Like, you know, I can't remember what they're called, but the buildings that shoot really far and can like, yeah, take out swaths of people's bases if you position them correctly on the map and right. shit. Right. There's like five tiers of of turret, you know? There's like the tier one tiny little laser turret. And you can yeah. get to like uh fire turret, electricity turret. Um you know, these little proximity turrets, and then you can go with mines, you can place mines out, um, and then you can get to, like, a laser turret with, like, really good range, and then you can get, like, almost like a mortar turret that has even further range, and you can get, like, these really big laser turrets that shoot, like, just massive range, and then eventually you get to these just giant turrets that cost, you know, tens of thousands of resources and they can fire across half the map and yeah, just destroy crazy. the opponent's base with like mortar and it takes like a huge amount of energy but you can just snipe their entire you know economy with a turret that's built in your base <laughs> so yeah it's it's wild man there's so much going on it's really really crazy Dude, where's the where's the turret upgrades man intricate and brutal or bro <laughs> I don't think it's made it, man. Yeah, Terran are desperate for a Terra upgrade. Imagine splash damage turrets, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. Mita's would be like, so much easier to deal with. Yeah. BOP. You have to get you have to get your science facility out though first. You gotta get like you gotta get teched up. But actually in, <laughs> in um total annihilation there's no like tech tree really, except there's like a tier one builder and then there's a tier two builder. So in order yeah, to build like you... tier two buildings and tier three buildings, you have to get the tier two, right? Uh, yeah, lab to yeah. get the tier two worker. So because you got your main commander guy that does all the the building, the generic stuff, but you have to build like um, laboratories of either air, ground, like bot labs or vehicle. Um, so it's basically an infantry vehicle or air, and each one of those can build a constructor bot, and then the constructor bot can build more advanced buildings, including a tier two version of that bot lab or vehicle lab or air lab. And then when you build that tier two version, it can build a tier two constructor bot, and that tier two constructor bot can build a tier three version of that, you know, and so on. So it gets pretty crazy. Yeah, there's only My two. Brain can't handle this. There's too much going on. Only two. <laughs> only two resources too. It's metal and and energy, which it makes a lot of sense. Like, you're basically right. like a sentient AI, that's just fighting a a war on another planet with another sentient AI, and you're both just fighting over metal, and you know creating renewable energy fusion reactors wind and right. solar and using energy and metal to build buildings and bots and all kinds of different fighting stuff even building buildings that convert energy into metal as well like all yeah. kinds of craziness the fuck imagine in starcraft being able to do that convert your minerals to vespin gas or something or convert <laughs> yeah. vespin gas to minerals yeah man. yeah yeah exactly and and, and it scales because like you know you could only build a few of those buildings initially or you could have a massive amount of them like you see some people they're really good at macro and they're just constantly building windmills all game long so eventually they end up with like massive bases just churning out the crazy amounts of resources cheers salut good day boys So yeah, you should definitely check it out. That's like, yeah, that's my new game right now. I'm really into it. I'm loving it. I actually reached out to them about doing some casting and the the community is really small. So uh, I contacted like immediately with a developer um, Wow. and got access to a huge amount of replays, like a whole replay um, repository that they have. So I'm just gonna like maybe put like one cast a week or something on my channel, and um, hmm. yeah, just just mess around with it, see see what kind of interest it gets, and keep playing it for fun, and see what see what happens. But like, I wish I wish that there could be a, a great RTS that could come out, something that could grab my attention like that, you know, something that I could like wake up every morning and be like really excited to play and cast and watch and stuff that would be really Wait, popular. Wasn't there like another one coming out like Frost Giant or something like that or 
That is Frost Giant Studios is the studio behind Stormgate. Stormgate. Oh yeah. god. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's the one, man. Rip, dude. There's another one coming out. Um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's kind of like a um, Red Alert Two, um, revamp or something like that. It looks like Red Alert Two, kind of, but. It's not. Um, I don't want you to show me. Yeah, we we sh- we looked at it on a podcast like a couple months ago or something. No, I can't remember what it's called. Um, yeah, it's the name escapes me, but it's actually looking very very good. Uh, I don't know how it's going to be for competitive play or if it's going to be viable. It could be one of those ones like kind of like Red Alert where most people just play casually. Uh, I don't think th- was there ever really a competitive scene for Red Alert. I don't. I feel um, like- there was a little bit it, when it got to like uh, number four with generals and stuff. That's yeah. when it became more of a competitive scene. Hmm. Hmm. It yeah, was always this- more of a campaign game. It was always well. More people of a played it a little bit. People played it a little bit competitively, but it never really had a proper competitive scene until like yeah, gotcha. CNC generals. Okay. I think. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it was well balanced. Things were pretty. I remember playing Red Alert as a kid. It was a game I played. I played that in like Sims, or like two other games I played when I was a little kid. It's pretty. Sims good. was fun. Pretty good game. Like <laughs> the way that the way that you control units and stuff is quite a bit different. And mm. there's like that whole thing with like running over units, right? Like you can, right? Small units can get run over by tanks and stuff. And so, <laughs> yeah. It's it's. Well, you used to be able to smash interceptors with fl- floating buildings. And- <laughs> <laughs> a little different, but yeah. Yeah, it's interesting with um beyond all reason. Like uh, I was thinking about this for Terran. Um, in beyond all reason, you often have range that's larger than your vision. So yes. you can get more uh-huh. vision. Like it's really good to get more vision so that you can fire at things. And one of the things you can get is radar, and then you can get radar jammers to prevent other people from seeing your units with radar. You can get mobile radars, right? Like units yeah. which have radar on them. Yeah, and oh my mobile God, mobile radar jammers too. Yeah. I just thought about something crazy in TBT that I've never thought about before. Yeah. What's that? EMP your opponent's scanners. <laughs> what would that do for you? You don't even have any you don't even have any invisible units to take advantage of that. I mean, I guess tanks you can like slowly push in. Exactly, dude. But they can't scan. <laughs> That's so <laughs> silly. <laughs> the main issue is that you have to EMP get the like, vessel close enough separate. to the Yeah, scan yeah. You actually have to, to you have to get cl- you have to get close enough to EMP and all the, the right, command dude, centers are spread apart. The matrix so. vessel and then send it in there. <laughs> it's a lot of resources investing in something that won't give you too much value. Yeah, very niche scenarios, man. <laughs> I mean, it might it, there might be some weird scenario where it's actually a good play, especially if you can get the vessel in and out. Um, but yeah, I would say generally speaking, the EV expected value on that would be low. So for TVT, like. In beyond all reason, you can't see very far. Oftentimes, you can't see, like, uh, but you can you can attack something. So you can attack ground with any almost any unit. Um, yeah. And so, uh, just imagine if you could do that with the uh, Terran, with like the manually tank, tell them to just tell the them to attack the ground the inside their range, yeah. but outside oh, the vision. You know what I mean? Well, that'd be a lot better against lurkers. That's for sure. That would be really good against Lurker, yeah. But um, against DT, it'd be tricky, but you could probably make it work. Yeah, it there's a lot of skill expression with that. You know what I mean? Where you can like, you can target Fog of War, almost like predicting where they might move next before exactly. you can see it. Yeah, before you can see it, or it's, memorizing where things were before they took out your radar or something. Right, memorizing where stuff mm-hmm. is predicting when attacks are coming and stuff and like firing into fog of war to you know deny them a lot of there's a lot of skill expression in that game it's really really interesting 
yeah and the amount of like variety of like tactics and styles you can see like i don't know if you've seen like some of the games where like they do these weird builds where he'll build a shit ton of like transports and a shit ton of turrets and he'll pick up all the turrets and like basically land turrets across the entire enemy side of the map all at once so all of a sudden there's like hundreds of turrets just everywhere gunning everything down in their base i actually haven't seen that but i have seen um there's there's this really cool move that people can do where you can build like a spy bot, like a little uh, cloaked invisible robot that can't deal any damage, but it has an EMP attached to it. Yeah, and yeah, so you it's go very in, good. You go into their base and you find their anti nuke, like their their nuclear defense capability, and EMP it, and then you nuke them and just <laughs> blow up their entire base with that type of move. It's really really sick. Oh my god, I want to show you guys a clip. This one was sick. I'll uh I'll screen share for a moment. Okay, hold Are on. I still screen sharing? I don't remember. Uh yes. Yeah, you are. You minimized your application though. Okay, hold on. So I gotta add. <laughs> this one is sick though, guys. This is like this is the sickest nuke I think I've ever seen in StarCraft Rude War. It was done by Wolfix actually. Oh, I saw this. I haven't seen it. I can't see anything on your stream, but I know which, I know which clip you're talking about. Yeah. Have you seen it, yeah. Sam? I'm not sure. You need to share your screen. Minim or it's minimized right now. Okay, hold on. Uh... I don't want to spoil it for Sam, but I know what you're talking about. Let me reset this up. As soon as I saw like the first few seconds of the clip, I knew exactly what he was doing and setting up, and I was like really happy to see it. All right, we're good. Yeah. This is Wolfix, boys. This turret will probably show me, right? Good day, commander. Good day, commander. Ghost report. Never know what here. We'll fix in James Bond mode. Just the setup and calculation from this play was amazing. Yeah. 55 seconds left. Ooh, he slipped by in the back. Oh shit. And that's just phase one. This is just phase one. Now look what he does. And he's got this other ghost to fake out, look. Oh. Look at this. This so now he work. thinks it's gone. That was the perfect bait. Don't even tell me it wasn't. Yes, no sir. way. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> that was <fucking> play. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, some Pimpus play type shit. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> this is insane, right? Yeah, that is so really good. good. Oh my god. This is yeah. peak StarCraft. This that is all I needed for real me. StarCraft right here, boys. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was like, I was just like, wow, dude, that was fucking sick, man. <laughs> when you showed it to me. Well, thanks for showing me that. That was, that was amazing. <laughs> Wolfix has been using uh, nukes a lot in TVZ. Like, you know how we have really? dropship play, we have vessel, radiate, we have, you know, just trying to bust the front. He's been mixing in nukes to try to bust, like, Lurker to Filer, Dark Swarm shit. Well, it makes, uh, I mean, that's a pretty good idea, honestly. Not bad. Like, if you've got a cloaked, uh, cloaked yeah. ghost and the Zerg player, they're not going to have speed on their overlords. It's going to be hard for them to get an overlord into position to spot that. Like, they probably need Plague to get rid of it in time. You can probably bust the front. Makes sense uh, when they're yeah, hiding under Dark Swarm. 
Well, I guess that the idea is you just pull them multiple locations. So you, you go for like two to four drop ships, one location, you're attacking one location, and then you have a nuke going on on the third location. Oh, because Jesus. a nuke, you just cast the nuke and it you know it takes what eight seconds or something for yeah. it to land. Yeah. yeah. You send in the drop ship preemptively, right? You can attack a location at the same time as the drop ship's going and you cast the nuke. And now it's like Dude, Zerg is sweating. Like, yeah. Zerg's got to deal with this dropship. Zerg has to deal with hitting the Dark Swarm to make sure they don't get busted on the front where the A move is happening. They got to find where the fuck the nuke is. Now they got to check everywhere where the fuck is this nuke. Yeah. You know? And then we were talking about it in detail, like, just the psychological factor behind, like, a nuke being used. Yeah. It's like, it's it's not even just, like, I like, not even just let's find the nuke and block it. It's like, dude, if I get nuked, this is embarrassing. Like, that's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like this can't happen, man. <laughs> Wait, he's clowning me. You're clowning, right? Right. I sense clowns. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Usually, gosh. if I'm a, if if I'm having if I'm having to deal with nukes, my mind is like tunnel vision on killing that ghost with my muters, no matter what. But mm. if you catch the zerg with their pants down, there's not a lot they can do. You can like create a ladder out of chaos to climb. I mean, and then there's that fourth aspect. You could literally have like a racer trait going at some other location at the same time there's, there's like so much you can do as two yeah. and there's like just tur the turtles are right just trying to get up to the ultras or whatever the fuck they're trying to do so, you have a lot of time not... yeah that's that's funny because i always say that there's like there's like four you have like four moves as terran while zerg is t uh turtling up and getting ready like after the vessels are out and the mutas are no longer useful okay you've got like four four good moves and then Zerg will be out with Ultra, and it's going to be hard. So, like, can you actually get in there and break them? And so that's basically Wolfix doing all four moves well, at the exact same well, time. <laughs> there, there's one more. There's one more move. There's the BCs hitting a gas. Right. Sure. I'm just saying, like, like that, that can help, but... Um, if you're by the time BCs are out, you're you've already got ultras out on the field, right? Like I'm saying, before the ultras come out and start taking map control back. Mm -hmm. It depends. You can get BCs kind of quick, but yeah, that's that's something I'm struggling with right now is cracking those like like once Zerg is like 2100 to like. Yeah, even 2100 Zergs, I feel like I can crack, but like those 2150, 2200, uh, man, I, if I get to that point in the game, it feels like they're just impregnable, dude. You just can't can't get in there, dude. Can't slip it in, man. There's a lot well, of blocks to, on that pussy. It's like the problem that I think Terrans have is they're not good at like maintaining a siege. Like you can't just suddenly break through. It's like you have to lay siege to the Zerg for like a good one to two solid minutes of non-stop irradiates and pressure. And eventually they make one tiny mistake where they don't make a defiler on time or something and you abuse it and you that's, crack them. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. And like I was learning a lot like tricks. Like like you know, I was talking about yesterday T V Z like was my focus of the night. And I was like asking oh. lots of questions like Hawk and Wolfix and Pandor and Nash and you know PBJT. I was talking to like a lot of like great minds that are very good at this game around the level, well better than me, you know, as, to put it in simplest terms. And um, like there's little things you can do, like you know how like defilers like to dance in the night, and can't radiate. So there's like tricks where you can go, like fake you're about to radiate. So they jump in the nidus and you go out yeah. of vision and then instantly just go back once you're out of vision because you know they're going to hop back right back into that same spot and then you get the, get their radiates off. And I was just like, oh my god, like that's sick, dude. Like I, I got to start using that shit. And like just little um, little ideas with uh, multi-prong attacks, like using more shift drop ship click and more shift irradiate vessel click. Yeah. And, you know, just, just like... Uh, like a lot of Zergs are like, damn, like Terran, how the fuck? Like, where they have 500 APM? How are they doing three things at the same time? It's like, yeah, that, no, you're just shift clicking these things in prior and then going yeah, for the you, move somewhere else. You yeah, know, you, like, you want to sell yourself like your boxer, even though you're not really doing a lot. You know what I mean? You want to like frustrate the Zerg at multiple well, locations the, with very minimalistic actions, but you can feel yeah, like you're a like, fucking pro gamer from the Zerg's perspective when you're able to like synchronize that shit. 
Yeah, that's the big thing. It's like one is eliminating vision on them. Like if you can kill those overlords at all those little locations that they're all those little nooks and crevices, those overlords are hiding on top of cliffs or whatever, and you can make the, the map more black. Like once you get to that point, it's like you just can just abuse the vision, like pretend you're going here, go here, pretend you're going there, go there, set up these multi prong attacks. And that's how you can get Zerg to make that one mistake and get in there and bust something. That's yeah, it sounds mean. good, man. It's, it's just so hard to truly execute, but in theory, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what makes a great Terran, man. They're able to, like, figure out this shit on the fly and, like, create opportunity out of nothing. Yeah, man. It's hard, though. It's so hard. Yeah, Flash makes it look easy. It's like a jazz musician, right? It makes it they make it look easy, but the actual execution of that is anything but. Think we're gonna have a Terran champion this uh, season? It's it's possible. It's favorably... got a lot of Terrans moving on, man. Got a lot it's of Terrans moving on. A lot of Terrans and a slightly Terran favorite map pool. So I would say it's not necessarily what? going. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Maybe I'm just Terran biased, man. I fucking feel like all the maps are never Terran favored. Uh, most Terran players will never admit maps are like Terran favored. They're either like just okay for Terran or like a little bit good for Terran, but they'll never admit that a Terran map is like an actual Terran map, usually. You know what I mean? There is a what, lot of Terran like, players, so. What map do you think is Terran favored? I'm curious. <laughs> well, it depends on the matchup and what map we're talking about. Like Minstrel TVZ, for example, was like extremely Terran favored. Yeah, Minstrel's like a veto for me, dude. I'll never play a TVZ on it. Maybe you should. <laughs> Maybe you, you should. Looks tough it for seems... TVP, though. Yeah, yeah dude. It TVP seems like rough. fucking I'm so, like, I'm just getting abused up my asshole playing this TVP, man. Maybe like Monty Hall as just... well. That's a pretty good map for Terran. There's lots of things you can do on that. I feel like the the two base play maybe on Minstrel, just like uh, six fact. Well, it fits into the love snow way. We don't take third bases, man. Like for instance, like Minstrel, you could you can six fact push straight down the the bridges. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then send vultures around one of the pathways you know there's so many different paths if the protoss is like challenging you right there you send vultures around lay mines behind and then you know push them into the mines pretty easy but they're not going to be able to cover you going all the different pathways to prevent you from running around with vultures I, while you're coming yeah up I, and I actually feel like that map looks a bit weird. I think I feel like in the mid game it might be Protoss favored, but I feel like Minstrel late game might actually be Terran favored, considering it might actually be good that the, the lanes are set up the way they are for Terran late game. It might be easy for Terran to force head on engagements and be way harder for Protoss to keep fluid in their army movements. It seems so fluid versus Zerg. It's so hard to pin them down and. They have so much room to move around you. I don't know. Mm. Um, so many counterattack paths, but yeah, they. I think they changed Minstrel. By the way, they they added eggs and, and swapped out mineral patches for eggs in certain locations, like from the. He like means the ladder. The, he means on the bases where the the minerals kind of like block a lane. They've like put eggs there to like make it so you can like drill over the eggs and stuff and yeah. they kill the eggs the holes you don't have to mine out the minerals first mm. hmm. which helps with pathing a little bit but that hole is a, a congestion point and it, and also a lot of units get blocked up in there yeah. we've seen that in case yeah interesting Yeah, I don't know. Like, I still feel like, like maybe Monty Hall is not that bad for Terran. I just gotta play it. I feel like, like I don't know what I'm well, you should embrace so more. I feel like the worst map in the pool for Terran is Dominator. Personally, probably, probably yeah. 
There's just way too much space in your main base for shuttles to fly in. It's too hard to cover all angles of attack. And then you also have a low ground main, which is always hard. Protoss can abuse you. Yeah. And um, Zerg has plenty of locations they can take around the map. There's lots of high grounds and small chokes. So, yeah, I feel like I feel like it's a pretty tough map for Terran that one. But I think that's like one of the only maps that's like particularly tough for Terran in the entire pool, though. I think you might be Especially right about that. At pro level, at least. Obviously, this is a lot mm. different for foreigners and like people at like BA rank trying to figure out these maps. Obviously, they're having a much harder time with like unit pathing and shit, right? For sure. All right, well, we've already done two hours, guys. How do you feel about wrapping this up? I'm cool either way, yeah. I think it's been fun, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a good time. Appreciate you guys. And uh, shout out to everybody in the chat, in Love Snow's chat. I'm going to come join you guys now, hang out for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come watch you um, struggle a little bit on the ladder. It'll be fun. Backseat you a little oh. bit. Nothing but wins tonight, dude. <laughs> We're going to hit nothing but wins tonight from here. All right, 2200 yeah. incoming. Be nice to see. All right, guys. Everybody out there, thank you so much for watching. I Love appreciate stuff. being invited. Thank you for hosting. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Nice to talk to Zan again. I talk to Sand every once in a while, but haven't really talked to you. Yeah, it's it been nice a while, man. Catch up. Yeah, for sure. We chat out some other time. All right, we'll do this again sometime. Maybe after you um, do your, uh, what's it, skydiving Twitch stream. <laughs> Get you back in here and oh, ask God. you what the experience was like. Probably going to shit myself, dude. <laughs> do it for the content, man. I, I, went, I went skydiving uh, last year. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was crazy, really? but it wasn't, wasn't. You know, I imagine it's just the actual jumping out part is the only real fucked thing about it. Once you jump out, it's everything's cool. Yeah, you just have to decide that this is what you're doing now. It's kind of like psychedelics, you know. You're just like, you just, yeah, you gotta accept it. Like, okay, we're we're going out the plane. Like, we're going up there. We're going out the plane. Like, <laughs> so. You're going up there, and you're going. Yeah, you had, out a, the you had someone now. attached to you. Like, it was because it was your first one, or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have someone attached oh, wow. to you first time. Yeah, I feel like that's. I feel a lot safer. Yeah, because think of, th think about it. You could like, you could like panic, freak out, or faint, and not even be able to like pull the chute to save yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's so many things that could go wrong on your first time up. Yeah, there. like, what if my guy that's attached to me fucking passes out while I'm up there, dude? <laughs> what well, I he's do he's done man? he's done plenty of jumps, so I imagine oh, yeah. the likelihood of that is very next to zero, but still possible, I guess. Just start slapping yeah, him in the face. <laughs> like, I'm gonna take a fucking little bottle with me. Pound that shit. <laughs> Just be like, Liquid courage. I hope I make it home. <laughs> you could do a cheers, salut, gumbe, while you're flying down. I guess see if you can drink well with the air <laughs> smashing into your face. If you, if you can, if you can, a... do, if you can hit the bottle while falling through the fucking air, that'd be good. <laughs> 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 I want to see that on stream. I have a half a camel bag, dude, with a fucking thing like just in my mouth, dude. Have it taped yeah. on. Just nice. like whenever Good I'm idea. ready, dude, I'll fucking take a pull. There you man. go. There you go. <laughs> That'd be crazy. On a skydive. I love shot. it. I love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's so you as well. You gotta do that shit. <laughs> mid mid fucking fight, like <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> <Sally>. <laughs> 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 yeah dude oh my god it's the ultimate oh. shot right there I'm the shot of the lifetime dude this uh mario erotica tts playing in the background <laughs> it'll be fun pretty peak life it'll be uh 
It'll be a, a Twitch moment. My well, knowledge hasn't resonate. been done before, man. So we're going to be the pioneers, hopefully. And even, even if we're not the pioneers, it's not very, very rarely done, I would say, if it has been done before. For sure. Yeah, I don't know. Go through either way. Sounds great, man. Best of luck. I hope it works out. Don't get eaten by a shark. Keep doing what you're nah. doing. I don't know which one I'm more scared of, man. <laughs> well, at least he's not skydiving into a pool of sharks like I originally thought he was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it one step at a time, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let's not get crazy, huh? Just just a casual swim with the sharks. Baby yeah, let's keep the sharks and skydiving separate. DMT and then jump off the plane, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to hit a DMT pipe with your eyes open and jump off the plane. That would be some next level shit right there, goddamn. I think the universe would just be like, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> like, sensory <laughs> overload, unironically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not fearful at all of like a heart attack or anything. But I just thought it was gonna be scary. <laughs> to, like, be right. I think once I get up there I'm gonna feel fine. I think it's just like like the build up, you know? Mm, like flying the, up like so the build up. Wild, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I mean I've flown on planes all over the world. Like I feel very comfortable being on planes, but just like Almost like when you take shrooms, right? Or you take acid. Like, you know it's going to hit at some point. You just don't know when, right? So you're just kind of like yeah. that that uncomfortableness of... Well, sometimes it's comfortable depending on what you're doing. Like, I just drink a lot and then I do it and I feel fine going in through that process. But if I was, like, sober, like, going in through it, like... It's like, oh, shit, dude. Like, when is it going to hit? And you're just like, how hard is it going to hit? You know, just... So yeah. I think that's more of the the part that's going to be a little scary is like while well, we're getting up there, we're getting to the right altitude, we're preparing for the jump, all that. Like my, my brain doesn't know what's going to happen. I've never done it, you know. And then once I do it, I think I'll be fine. I'll just be like, let's just enjoy the moment, man. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. You'll enjoy it for sure. I had a great time jumping out of a plane. It's uh, probably a once-in-a-lifetime experience for me, but it was definitely a pretty sick once-in-a-lifetime. The adrenaline pumping or what? Yeah, pretty, pretty adrenaline bursting, but um, mostly it was just like pretty zen for me, just going up in the plane and trying to be as calm as possible, you know what I mean? Yeah, I already feel that right now. Even just like thinking about it, like my initial thoughts of fear and shit, I'm just like, if I'm going to do this, I can't think that way. So I'm already right. like training my brain to be like, you know, just chill. Yeah. You're going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like freaking mm -hmm. yourself out over a, a psychedelic experience. Just less you think about it, the better, probably. Yeah, you, you just got to go into it, bro. You're like, I'm doing this. Kind of like exactly the words you said. Like, I'm doing this. I'm just going to be as calm as possible and just fucking enjoy the ride. Yeah, I've get, I've made the decision. You know, this is just a follow through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, yeah. The, like you should think about it like the moment that you step into the plane is like, I've decided to jump out. You know what I mean? You've already made the decision. Dude, there's nothing I, I can't imagine. it. There's nothing worse than like flying up in the plane and then pussing out and then having to fly back down. <laughs> oh, man, especially on on a Twitch stream, right? If you're yeah, live no, streaming, stream. if, you're gonna, if you're gonna do that, don't do it on a stream. Yeah, definitely do not do it on stream. No, I would. So sure. I'd probably have to stream on the whole like build up process to the the whole climax of it. You know. Yeah. So you have to do it. There's no choice. Yeah, I have to. There's so, no pussing out, man. So there's I mean, I've already done something kind of wild. There's no reason. I was in Costa Rica. Freaking out about it. Right. Like I was in Costa Rica, and um, they have the world's longest zip lines. And uh, when we got to the final zip line, we were like over a mile, a mile and a half high in these trees. I was fucking terrified because I don't like heights. And my sister is like a little courageous girl, dude. She was like, I don't know, I was probably like 17. She was like 14 or 13 or something at the time. And she just like hooks on. She's like, all right, ready, brother? And I'm just like, oh. 
and we just do it. And there's like a certain way you have to balance yourself because they're just like, yeah, like you don't want to get stuck halfway, man. You gotta, you know, all in Spanish. Like you necesitas hacerlo como esto, amigo. Necesitas tener este distancia y todo. Blah blah blah. Basically, like there's a certain way you have to like position your body weight and your legs so that you actually make it through because the final, the final zip line at the highest point, like the last one, it's like a little over a mile of being of zip lining over the over the forest top, dude. It's crazy. And I remember like wanting to like take a video of it while I was, but they're like, yeah, don't do that. You're gonna probably drop your phone. And you're not gonna be happy about it. <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to find that thing somewhere in that the was, jungles uh, of Costa Rica. Right. That was probably like <laughs> like in the rainforest, man. That was probably like the scariest thing I'd done up until that point in my life. I think after that, for sure, DMT was probably the scariest. But... <laughs> I mean, I doubt skydiving is going to be more scarier than DMT. I don't know. No. I don't think it can be. No, I don't think anything can be scarier than DMT in terms of like intensity. Maybe like getting hacked up by a chainsaw or something. I don't fucking know. Heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a few things, but not a lot. Not a lot compares with that kind of craziness of an experience. That's true. That's true. Well, I guess I'll try for the third time let's, to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> it's time it's time yeah. boys let this man wrap it up it's time all right guys thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video next Peace. episode bye guys